L'objectif est à portée de main. La route est plus difficile que jamais. Mais c'est ici et maintenant que tout se joue. Il est des instants qui peuvent changer une vie. Des instants cruciaux où il est primordial de se transcender pour marquer l'histoire. Et il n'y aura qu'une seule place au sommet. Une seule place qui permet de toiser de haut le monde et d'envisager sereinement son avenir. Qui sera le premier à entrer dans la légende Qui parviendra à terminer l'ascension stage here I'm sitting a little bit out to the corner but I can feel the energy of the crowd and it is electric we've had two qualifiers up until now we have the 16 best players gathered on stage and we're looking forward to Bonsoir some amazing track mania this is quite incredible this is quite incredible everybody and I hope that you are ready C'est Montpellier, mec. Enfin, avec ta ville, là, on en peut plus. On en peut plus. It's gonna be legendary. Bonsoir à toutes et à tous. Bienvenue à la maison. Comment ça va, la maison So just C'est quand même fou parce qu'il y a des gens. Il y a des gens, ils sont venus, vraiment. Non seulement ils ont pris les billets, mais en plus, ils sont venus. This is the third and final step. The first two have already had quite competitive matches. One in Lyon, one in Lillea, but this is the grand final in Montpellier. Starting with the semi-final one, but we're first going to have an introduction of all the players. As we are now just waiting for the introduction here, everybody. I I am battling with a lot of noise here. There is the noise of the crowd, there is the noise of the casters. We're going to have to speak up. Okay, 
but it seems to be all under wraps. Have the chance to speak with all the players, have the chance to speak with Serrator, and for as grand as all this is, there's not that many nerves. Everyone is just excited because Trickmania on a stage like this happens so infrequently, and it happened with the initiative of Serrator on the left, who has been hosting Trackmania events for 10 years now, and he wanted to do one final grand event in this game. And this is what you're witnessing. So here we have the German caster booth, Trillux, Paradox, and another. You're soon going to get to see me, everybody. So here we are. <laughs> so we have both received these amazing boosts at the top parts of the stage. We were witnessing just the crowd in the bottom. You can see the camera now here where I'm sitting. We have the stage over here, everybody, and the crowd all around us. So I am very excited for this. I <laughs> traveled out today. It's been a long journey to get here, but sitting in this room, feeling the energy, it's going to be amazing. So I will do my very best to bring this to you in the best way possible, the way it should be. But I feel with every French eSport crowd, they always have just an energy level, unmatched almost anywhere else in the world. So it's bound to be good. But while, uh, while we're witnessing some banter here in French, uh, guys, this tournament, the second closest tournament we've had in prize pools in Trekmania history goes back to 2006, where there was a $50,000 tournament hosted. The prize pool for this tournament is over $128,000. We'll get to that, but first, I think we're gonna take a look at the format. We have the challenge and the revenge. These were the two leading steps where the players qualified into this match. And the 16 qualified players will now play in two semifinals of eight players each. We're gonna have a pick and ban system, which is quite intricate, but I'll explain it to you. And it should be quite easy to understand. Uh, the players will ban maps based on their seed, and then seed one gets to pick map first, and he can place the map anywhere he wants. If seed one wants to play his map as the third map, he can. Then seed two picks, then seed three. There's 25 maps that they had to learn in total, and it's quite hard. But then they play cup mode. The uh, goal is to reach 120 points for finalist mode, I believe, where afterwards they actually keep gaining points and then the top four players will advance to the finals. In the final, we again have cup mode. You gotta hit finalist mode and then try to close out your attempt. But if someone closes this out, the entire tournament is over. We only play till one winner, and the winner of this tournament takes home $66,000. That is a quite life-changing amount of money for a Trekmania tournament. The players are all super excited for it. I've been in the back room talking to the players as they were warming up, and everybody just has their eyes on the prize, the tournament, the trophy as well, and the glory of winning on such a stage like this. Especially the French players, there's quite a lot of French players in this field, and the common story is that a lot of them started playing Trekmania because of Serrator. They watched his tournaments back in 2014, 2015, 2016, the first in-person tournament he hosted, and now they're here. Players like Gloss that you just saw there next to Granati. But look at this. The prize pool was funded by Serrator's Twitch viewers. Every subscription for a month accounted for $2 added to the prize pool. The challenge had 19,000 euros added to it. Chalik won that one ahead of Binks. And Wosal and Gwen in third and fourth. Then you had the revenge where it was Granati who won ahead of Afi and Masa in third. Crazy final. But now we will see the ascent where 70% of this prize pool is allocated 62,000 euros or 66,000 dollars for first, 70,000 for second, and 8,000 euros for third. And fourth place gets nothing. 
It's only top three out of these 16 that will walk home with a prize, but they've all already earned something in the previous steps. And yeah, even just outside here, getting to this arena, everybody has been waiting in long queues to get their spots, but just look at this, just taking the energy. You can see us waving, that's the Germans, but it's, it's going to be amazing, everybody. We will soon have the pick and ban, but we're starting with the first semi-final. And I can already tell you the players that will be in it, I think it's going to come up on an asset here soon, shortly for you guys too, but the first semi-final will have Granati, Binks, Wosau, Richie, Mime, Bren, Glust, and Heave. So if you're waiting for the Titans, the real favorites that people have predicted here, Gwen and Carl Jr., they're in the second semi, but the first one is also going to be fireworks right off the bat. So 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is the distribution. 120 to reach finalists and top four make it to the grand final later tonight. Top four to have a chance. Half the field will be knocked out in these first two matches. And if you've never watched Serato Cups as a whole, I can already tell you, the maps they play, there's 25 in total, the maps they play are notoriously troll. They are very difficult. There's so many obstacles. The bans are going to be very important because the players have not had time to perfect 25 maps. The bans are going to be very important. You got to ban away the things you're not comfortable on. You got to pick and hope that the one pick that you get is going to be favorable for you in the four or five rounds you get to play on it. And then you're just going to hope that everything aligns for you to go to the final and have a chance at this once in a lifetime. Maybe not once in a lot of time, but for now, it, it truly is. We can always hope that Trickmania gets bigger over the years, but once in a lifetime price that Serrator and his community is putting up for this. And this, of course, does not work without their sponsors, so Continental is a big part of making this tournament happen. You can see them on stage and even on the tournament podium, uh, the, 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 the trophy podium you have stacked row of Continental Tires, but here we go with the player introduction, starting with Uffi from Switzerland. He got first in the Serrator Cup last year together with Gwen in a year where they were battling with very tough comp uh, competition. You also have the uh, win that Uffi and Arel got in the regular season of Grand League. Formidable player, got second place when he qualified to the finals. And now Arthur Arthur is a player that not a lot of people have heard of outside of Serrator tournaments, but I want you to know, I talked to Carl Jr. earlier today and he put up Arthur as one of the favorites. He truly might very well be one of the favorites here. Bit of a dark horse, people are sleeping on his skill level, but he's had a lot of preparation and he's very consistent on these maps. So keep an eye on Arthur here. He could really uh, surprise a lot of people, I think. Though not in the Grand League as it is, the top 16 players in the world in the regular competitive circuit. You will not find Arthur there, but for this tournament, he came so prepared. But he can pack a punch. Binks here, who also got second when he qualified in the first qualifier, uh, just behind Chalik in a, a tens final. Has a first place in the Cupra Cup, as well as third from stage one of Grand League, and a win in a cup called the ASCAP Cup. A lot of people have Premier Etoiles as their favorite map. This is a map built by Serrero's co-caster. And the hours they put into this one map out of 25 is quite insane, but you'll see it. Bren, a community favorite here in France. Always smiles, always positive, Bren. And uh, easy to cheer for. It's the type of player you want to win. And he has won the Serrator Cup before, the TM Cup in 2019. That time it was a duo cup together with Carl Jr. And his favorite map is also my favorite map. It's the Pyramid map, <laughs> but uh, it's very likely that one gets banned away. Uh, not a lot of players like the Pyramid map. Uh, and now Glust, who I spoke to as well just earlier, Grotesque is his favorite map. Said that he felt he had a decent chance and he's so happy to be here. Started playing Trekmania because of Serrator in 2016 and has dreamt of playing on this stage ever since. And now he's fully gotten all the way here. Got second place last year 
in the Duel Cup together with Wosail, who is going to be playing in the semifinal as well. Now he has to do it solo though. Granati here, the steering wheel player from Germany. The only player in this field of 16 that uses a steering wheel rather than a keyboard or controller. And the thing about this is that very few players want to sit next to him when they play because he shakes the desk a little bit and he makes a lot of movements. If you're not used to playing against someone on a steering wheel, it can be quite jarring, especially on land. But Granati has made this one weird input device work for himself. There are some maps it's really good on, but really it comes down to the brains. The brains of this man are bigger than average and he uses that device to great efficiency. Heave here as well from France. Bit of a mini RPG, RPG background, but has made his way over to multi-styles as well. Also said that he felt like he had a chance and that on a good day he could definitely get there. Was one of the top players in the first qualifier, I believe. Said he also really liked the um, map with the, the reroute that Masa used. Out. We'll get to this, but felt like he had good chances, he said, but it's also going to be tough. Mime from Poland. Vinka to everybody, or Mimke rather. If you're in on the emotes from Poland. Has a win in the Team World Tour Showdown. Second place, though, in the World Cup last year. Has to be his greatest accomplishment. Really pushed Carl Jr., who is our GOAT in the game, to his limits. Richie here, absolutely amazing player. Bit of an underdog. Richie started playing Trekmania three years ago. He started playing in 2020 when this game came out, and now he is on the biggest stage the game has ever seen. He got through the qualifier by his own merit, his own skill. He failed a couple of jumps, but he kept such good composure to not choke, and he made it through. Here we have Wosal as well, now playing for alternate Adax. Was Glus' teammate when they got second place in the um, uh, TM Cup 2022, but here, we see some other accomplishments. Gamers Assembly first place this year, also winning the Challenger League this year, and a third and fourth place in the Cooper Cup. Said he hadn't had that much time to practice, maybe not as much as he would want to, but he's still going to give it everything he's got in this matchup. Whew. So with that introduction, I hope you know a little bit about these players. You will get to know them way more and maybe find your favorite to cheer for. In this first semi-final, I have put my prediction on who I think will be the winner. And I might be wrong, but having looked at the field, I thought Gwen, uh, sorry, Bren, mixing up names here, Bren might be the favorite to qualify out of this heat, but it's very close and it's very stacked. I feel a lot of tension in the room right now. The crowd is kind of eagerly anticipating what's about to happen. So we are going to have the walkout on stage pretty soon. And then the pick and ban. I really wish I could control the camera and pan it around to show you guys, but you can also see it here, just what a grand room we are in. Sometimes I've heard the CSGO <laughs> casters refer to it as the Cathedral of Counter-Strike. This is the Cathedral of Trackmania. Top right is where you'll find me here in this room. And I'm going to do my very best to bring this to you guys in English. And my French is not the best, guys. But if I had to uh, take a stab at what Serrata and the Tawals are talking about here, it has to be the... Uh, No, I cannot. I cannot pick it up. I cannot pick it up. We got to pick our own conversations. It's uh, it's lost on me. But a lot of people asked me in the back room if I was nervous to cast this, and I said no. I don't think I am. I have basically almost no responsibilities for how this show goes. My responsibility is to have fun, watch Trek Mania, my favorite game for over ten years, on a big stage, and enjoy it. It's, it's a lot of pressure on the tech crew, though, to put all it together, to put together an English cast. It's the first Serrator Cup in, like, seven years where we have a proper English cast, so 
massive shout out to production for making this happen. But here we go, I believe. The players are coming forward on to the stage, taking their spot here. And now a quick interview with Serrator. We'll see what we can make of these words. <gasps> it's not even an interview, it's the pick and ban. These are the maps. So he banned away pneumonia. I think, yeah, he was banned away pneumonia, the tire map. He said this is the worst map to play on keyboard, and he was a keyboard player, that's why he wanted it gone. Okay, and we get Epoglas out. The map I'm not too familiar with, unless I see the screenshot, I'm looking for it right now. I know the, oh, it, oh, that's the reroute map, Epoglas. Applaud there. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with the commentary here, everybody. Plastica band. Ooh. Plastica, my bad. Very tough map to play. Very precise uh, jumps that you have to get with gears. What do you choose? The pyramid map is banned away. Very unlucky. We might get to see that. <laughs> Dommage. Oh, we. All right. Okay, so both Glasticut and Plasticut, I believe, are now banned away. And we have two more bands to go. Okay. Three more. Tria logo. The trial map is getting taken away by Wolosal. I know some players were really looking forward to playing that, hoping it would be open. Also, the toughest map in the map pack. Thara Poppy. Not a map I'm too familiar with by name, but Bing's taken away that one. And now the Seed 1 ban from Granada here. Let's see what he bans. Granati banning away at Tuval's map. This is a crowd favorite as well, by the way. They're not going <laughs> to be too happy with Granati for that. Ooh, okay. So Granati wanting map 7 as seed 1. Now seed 2 picks, Binks picks. Blue Pink Glass as the sixth map. So the reason they're picking these late maps, by the way, if you're not familiar, is because they're playing for finalist mode. And by picking a map late into the map pack, they want to have a map that they can end on, that they can win a round on and lock in as their 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 victory round. So if you pick a map early, you might think, oh, I get into an early lead. But in finalist mode, it's everything about that that clutch closing, closing, winning a round near the end of the match. So picking these later numbers makes sense to me. Essential Quasimetri is a very weird map, but makes sense for Wolsa to pick it. Oh, the tire map. No import. This is the map where a lot of mistakes happen near the ending. They jump through that tire that you can see on the screenshot. Bren wants the pipe dirt map. That's a really wild pipe trial map. One of the hardest maps in the map pack. Hoping to get to an early lead here, actually. Grotesque. Under. Even I can understand that. And that was his listed favorite map here, Glust. So 
Actually gets that locked in. And he getting La Sainte Silon. This is the map that he qualified to the final on. There's an ice spin between the trees. And after he got through, he couldn't quite believe that he made the spin in that first qualifier. But they're going to take their seats. We are getting ready. The stadium is getting amped up now. As uh, we are just moments away from starting. What a map pack. Some interesting choices and picks and bans here. It's the most intricate system that we've ever had. But I think it makes sense, especially for Granati. Having seed one, you pick your best map as the seventh. When you hit that 120 point mark, you want to be on something you're super comfortable with. And by all means, if that's the map that he saw that he thought he could have, then he should totally, totally lock it in. Then you see Brand taking the opposite approach going, no, you know what? I'll just take my pipe map first. <laughs> I'll take my pipe map and I'll chill and try to get to an early lead. Let's get some hype in the chat. Let's get a prediction going on who you think might win this heat. Be the first person to cross the barrier for finalists in here. You can see just the rarity. It's a racing game, but Granada, the only player on a steering wheel. And then you see some players like Heave on keyboard. And then some controller players. And then it is the uh, ever-long discussion. Do you have the controller under the desk or over the desk? Also, preference there. But I'm, I'm amped up. I'm ready to go. We're going to have pipe trial action right off the bat. And then Grotesque. Also a very, very interesting map with these players on it. It's uh, so close to the margins on Grotesque. There's not really a lot of places you can gain. But all the Serrator maps, no matter which map pack they're from, from the first one or the second one, if they're from the first Serrator Cup 10 years ago or this one, he always has this characteristic style that's soon become French mapping, as it's, as it's named, with a lot of obstacles and a lot of tricks. Here we have the predictions. Serrator predicts Granati. Etoiles and myself predict that Bren might be the winner. The Brazilian stream, TV Beta, predicts Granati. And, of course, the German cast with Trillix and Röder and Paradox also predicts Granati as the winner. It's a tough call. I think Bren on the home soil with the crowd cheering him on might be just a favorite to take this. But Granati looked so solid in that qualifier that he has just as big chances, I believe, on paper. That is the stats we can look at. Now we have to see who handles the pressure the best. You really don't want to let it get into your head. You're playing the biggest tournament of all time. You could have failed 10 tournaments in a row in the past five years of Trackmania, but if you win this one, you might just be the all-time most winning Trackmania player. That's how wild it is. If you have your best day of Trackmania in your life right now, you could be more successful in terms of, <laughs> in terms of prize earnings than every other player before you. So this is a big day to hit your peak on, to get in the zone. But it's a different environment than you're used to. Maybe the desk is a bit higher than you're used to. Maybe the audio from the crowd, the players next to you, the intensity. There's a lot of things that can throw you off your game. We will see who the best is. The crowd is ready. Are you ready, Twitch chat at home? The English fans. Let's get ourselves right into game here for the first semifinal. Players are right now, as we speak, warming up on the servers. Shaking loose the last little bit of nerves. J'ai peu confiance en moi ce soir, mais je sais qu'avec la force du public, ça va le faire. Merci Zerator. La source sur Montpellier, c'est une opportunité incroyable et j'espère faire honneur à tous ceux qui nous regardent depuis chez eux. I will do my best and enjoy to the fullest. Ce soir dans le public, il y a ma famille qui m'ont soutenu pendant tout mon entraînement. Ce soir, je vais jouer pour les rendre fiers. L'objectif principal, c'était Montpellier. Maintenant, on va kiffer. It was a very long journey to get here, and many people put their trust in me, and I will not disappoint them. Uh, je remercie encore une fois Zerator pour toutes ces années de compétition. Ça a été un plaisir de jouer sur toutes ces scènes, et j'espère briller maintenant à l'ascension. Very fun to hear some final words before the game. Get to know the players a little better. Here we go. 
If you're unfamiliar with the format, I'll explain it one more time as we're just about to get into the game here. There are eight players in this semifinal. Only the top four will advance to the grand final. In order to get there, you have to score points by playing rounds repeatedly and placing high positions. First place in a round gets you 10 points, second place gets you 8, and then 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You need to reach a total of 120 points to get to the finalist status, where afterwards winning one round is required to lock in your spot. Now there's a unique twist here, which is that in regular finalist mode you can't gain points beyond 120, but now you can. If you play second place after 120, you still gain points. And the only thing this matters for is tiebreakers, if, if that comes to it uh, in the grand finals. But for, for all intents and purposes, 120 points is what you need, and then one win to clinch your spot in the grand finals. Only the top three players after today get any part of the prize pool. It is $66,000 for first place, it is $18,000 for second, and $9,000 for third. See the player names one more time rolling on the screen. Here we go. On to Dirt Al Sa I think is how you say it. The Dirt Pipe Trial Map is how we'll pronounce it in English. A lot of tricks that can be done here. A lot of skips that can be done if the player's there. First round is underway. Let's hear it for our first semifinal of Ascensions. Third step. Now this was picked by Bren, who wanted it right off the bat, but he is seventh place going through the opening checkpoints here, and I can see they're now trying to drive on this pipe as fast as they can while making sure they don't fall off. You really cannot afford to fail rounds and have to respawn a lot. You want that consistency, even if it's a third, even if it's a fourth place, you just want to make sure you don't fall off. And Granati here off to a flying start, smooth steering over that pipe and staying on the correct side to have the right amount of pressure so that his car does not slip off. You want to always stay on the inside of the turn. And here, a little bit of a split field. It is Wosal challenging Granati for that first place, and Richie coming through as well. Onto the last shortcut here through the checkpoint. And now if you full speed across, you can almost jump all the way down with a risk. Wosal with the flip. Granati bouncing on the plastic. Wosal is going to win the first round. Granati barely getting second. Richie, who Making it through that finish in Fifth place, Brennan getting sixth, Steve seventh, and Binks eighth after that big respawn. And a one minute winning time here is quite solid. We've seen players drop times down in the 58s here. And there are certain skips you could do, all right? For Time Attack World, actually, there are certain skips you could do. Whether you can do them on stage is a different thing. But in this first pipe turn, with a lot of speed, it is possible to jump across at the end of this first circle right onto the second. We're not going to see anyone dare to try that here. Uh, beyond that, there's also potential for a skip near the ending. Getting a lot of speed and then jumping all the way down almost to the, the second pipe on the left. Now though, look at this. This is why Brent picked this. He has cleared the field by about half a second. But again, this is the part where Richie tended to get a lot of speed. And he's climbing back up. Brent with the respawn gone from the field. Suddenly Richie in first. Last time the ending jump was an obstacle for him that he ended up upside down on. Heave leading into that last pipe, getting a lot of speed too. Granati a bit shaky. Heave going on the right side, getting a clean landing. Richie getting quite clean of the landing as well. Heave winning the round, but oh, so close for that second place. It's still Bren by just one hundredth of a second ahead of Granati. Mine getting fourth. But that will mean that it is Granati leading after two rounds played on this. Bren is Ready the scoreline a little bit, now up to 11 on his own map choice. And the pace here was way faster by, by Heave, Richie, and especially Brad, who respawned and still got second place. He was on pace for a 40, uh, 58. Third round now. Keep in mind, we will be only playing four rounds per map. So if you pick a map and you make it your everything, if you crash two of the Three first rounds, that's a lot of value lost here for Brand, who now has to take a lot of risks to catch back up. Trying to stay on the correct trajectory through that first one, maybe getting a little closer. And now how fast you want to dare to go through this corner. A lot of players getting an awkward bump, but staying on. And we have all eight players in the field. Richie, though, hitting the wall there, not getting a good exit wobble. 
Brand gonna risk here most likely. It's not gonna be satisfied with an eighth place. Going to get a lot of speed through that Ascension logo on the sausage blocks up to fourth now, maneuvering the field. Last bounce, getting a clean landing, a lot of speed for Bren, who might just pass up the entire field. Bren from last to first on his own map choice, despite the early mistake, is not going to let this one slip. Kicking things off with another 10 points for himself. That is a champion comeback in a semifinal when you need it most in the biggest tournament we've ever had. Heroics here from Bren, and he's going to take the lead in the match with that, I believe. One point ahead of Heave and Granati, who have been consistently in the top positions. One more round here for Bren to make use of his map choice. He's not going to be seeing this map again for another full rotation, 32 rounds at least. Gotta make it worthwhile here. But remember, last round he was like a second behind the field at this point in the track, and now he's up there near first. But we have seen a lot of pace on this from Wosal as well. On the inside line there, Wosal still staying level. They jump up the side to get less air time. And it is Wosal and Bren who have found the best flow on this last round of the pipe map. On the inside, Wosal, a lot of speed through the ascension. Logo almost hitting the top. Now setting up for that last shortcut bounce through the checkpoint. Bren again going more on the left side. Wosal wobbly, but Bren so much control. Awkward landing that should go to the finish. Granati sniping it away by a tenth of a second. And with that, Granati will be in the lead of the match, but great start for both Bren and Granati, two of the favorites that people had in the predictions. Also very fast times here, 59 low consistently. is not easy to drive. And I think an explosive start to this tournament playoffs. <laughs> Going to Glust's map choice. Did not catch how Glust did on the first map, but this is his favorite map. And he uh, has some interesting lines here. There's a couple of small shortcuts you can do on this map if you are comfortable. Uh, you can see on the screen there, the player going out to the left in the start. That's a small skip that can save up to word, upwards of a tenth of a second. Apart from that, there's some other small uh, quirks in the raising lines the player is going to do. For the most part, the margins here are going to be a lot tighter. We're talking, if you are three tenths behind first, you're probably seven. Like, you have to have immaculate pace to match the top players on this. One small mistake, you're probably out. That's the round. Here we go. Beautiful oasis scenery here with a cave. That's why it's called Grotesque. Every Serrator map has a pun in it in French. So Grotesque, it has a grotto, you know? Hard to understand these puns sometimes, but sometimes it makes sense. Now, out to the left. About half the field are trying to do this. Bren failed the shortcut and Binks as well. But if you look at Glust and Richie, the reason they do this is to have more speed for this entire part here. And at the end of it, we will see Glust up near the front with that shortcut. That is why he loves this map. That is why he picked it. And just like Bren, he only gets four rounds on his map of choice. But right now, he is 0.2 ahead of everyone else on one of the most skill-based, not that luck-heavy maps in the map pack. Look at this. He's dominating right now before the grotto, which is a very bumpy part. You're driving on these rock slabs, uh, descending almost like a staircase before one final jump into the finish, where you need a low flip out to the right here. Gloss missing it! And it's going to be he barely winning the round here by a tenth. Ooh. Lost with dominating pace there, but with that mistake, the last hurdle, he's going to be down almost in last in the match now. Granati and Bren both scoring decently, but he closing the gap up towards them now. Only three points between the top three. But again, look at this start from Glust. Instantly up into first here, and this is a way better start than the previous round where he was about equal to everyone else now. Mo oh, I would say that he was further ahead, but no, they're matching him. The uphill was maybe not that good. The landing here a bit shaky, but he still keeps all the platform. If you touch the grass here, for one, you're not a gamer, but for two, it's penalty grass. It's gonna slow you down a lot. 
There are still certain spots where you can cut across the grass a little bit, like right here with the reactor booster. Makes it worth it there for Glust. Richie missing the drift a bit. Wolosaw catching up to him. But again, Glust has outpaced the entire field on his own map choice. Can he get this ending right? Cannot afford to flip out too early. Has such a huge gap to work with and a high flip. Should still do it, Richie, though. Woo! What a great ending from Richie, but 50.7 from Glust and Heave has to be said, is also doing so well on these maps. I don't think people would predict that after six rounds of play that he would be in first place. But he is. 40 points right now. One third of the way to that 120 point mark. Out to the left on the shortcut once again. Richie this time I believe with the best shortcut. Brand Vinks and Gloss joining them. You might ask yourself, why are the other players not doing it? And the reason is, is that it's just too risky. On maps like these and in this setting with a lot of nerves and a lot of pressure, some players just favor the consistency of not wanting to take any big chances in the start, get a decent run going, and then maybe look to take some risks near the ending. But at least give yourself a fighting chance here. If you're Granati, you know you are in sixth place, but with a risky ending, maybe you can make that a second, a third. This time it's Binks. Into the cave in first. Heave is right there once again. Hasn't really had a bad round. Gloss, though. Upside down into the cave, Damage. As we now see Heave challenging Binks here, getting a lot of speed, low flip could do it for Heave. It should be Binks, Bren in second. I believe Heave actually missed a big respawn. 50.5, very competitive times here. But it's actually quite close to the world record, which is a 50 low, if memory serves me right. Unfortunate for Heave. Lost a little bit of momentum with that but has also built up enough points to be able to afford it. And a much needed 10 pointer for Binks. He was last there by a lot, but 10 points puts him at 24. Now equal to mine. He's also not had too much screen time, except for that very first round, I believe, where he was up near the top. Very hard to keep up with these players, so every single round is quite close to the world at pace. Heave getting a lot of speed here. Catching up to Richie and Glust, who are not uh, the most established names on the eSport here. Bren and Granati have been around, and especially Mime 2 and Binks, on the top stage, Trekmania and the Grand League for the past couple of years. Right now, these Serrator players are giving them a challenge. Heave into the checkpoint in the cave, Glust in first. Last chance on his own map choice, fourth round, fourth flip! Ooh! 100th ahead of Richie and 400th ahead of Wosal. But first place for Glust. And he gets quite a good points value out of his own choice as well. <laughs> Small breather here before the third map. I believe this was chosen by Binks. This next one. See if we can judge any of the expressions here. I love how close Richie is to the monitor. He's not going to sit far away. He is in the game. He's in the car. As we see the map. Oh, it is the, it is the tire map. Um, this one. Nimport. I, I hope I'm saying this right. I'm probably not. Nimport. I don't know. The tire map, all right? This one has a very tricky obstacle near the ending. That jump that you see in the cinematic here through the continental tire has made and broken dreams of getting to this semi-final. And it might make or break dreams of getting to the grand final as well. Looking especially at Richie, who got to the finals by making that jump on his third attempt. He was first place going into that jump twice and then failed that last jump, but critically still made it. Heave also, I believe, qualified on this map after Richie failed. So a lot of memories from the previous matches. But already we've had a mistake from Gernotti. One of his first in this match. Bren leading before this grass jump. You want to land a bit on the right side and get a lot of speed through this left-hander. And then aim on the right side. Release appropriately through the tire. Bren respawning, Heave making the first jump perfectly full speed ahead of Wolsal. That's going to be good for Heave, especially after Granati and Bren both respawn. Some of the top players here scoring the least points. He's going to come back into that top four. 
which is what we're playing for at the end of the top four. We're going to make it to the final here. Points limit 120. We're almost halfway there. And look at how close it is. 52, 51, 50, 48, 47. Only looking a little bleak right now for Mime, Lust, and Dinks. On board with Mime through the dirt part. Passing up a few players, trying to land in a slight ice line here. Not because you want the speed, but mostly to control your car. Set up for the ice line through this corner. Control the gear. Don't jump too far into this Ascension logo. And he gets so much more speed than Binks. Is going to pass up Granati as well. Looking for third now. Richie and Bren up near first. Richie's been in this spot before. Needs to hit the jump though. Bren respawned in first place here last time. This time a bit out to the left, hitting penalty grass. Gonna have an awkward setup, looking very bleak for Bren right now in this round. Very hard to land the jump from that setup, and he is gonna miss it. And triple fail! It's Biggs taking first place! Showing just how hard this jump is. Everybody not getting the speed to jump cleanly through the tire, landing full speed on the downhill. And you can really tell in the setup already in the grass turn. If it doesn't look intentional what the player is doing there, it is very likely they're off their ideal course and they might fail it. It's all about rhythm, it's all about feeling. And he even turtled into the finish. To the delight of the crowd. Granati retaking first place in the match. Now Mime, he tweeted earlier today, Mime. A quote that I really liked, which was 1% faith, a 1% chance, 99% faith. That he was going to try his best, even if the chance of getting to the finals and winning is low. 1% chance, 99% faith. And I think, although being in last place in the match, he still has a lot of faith left in the tank. No stranger to uh, playing matches and coming back to mine. He's trying again, and look at Brent's place on this map. Once again in first, has respawned two rounds up in first place through the check, but can he get the jump now? That looks good for Brent, who might get his first 10 pointer. Mine missing the jump, but Brent, a well deserved first place in 10 points. And Binks as well, scoring the eight here for second place, leveling the field a lot now. In the top three still scoring decently. Wosau with the one pointer, having a respawn. Last round here on Mime's map choice. Has not gone the way he'd hoped, and he slides here in the start. That's not what you want either. Oh, Brad risking, barely surviving. Even with a clip, he's still fourth. That wet tire part, so hard to control. Now it's he thinks and Richie up first. You can be too fast out of this ice slide. You have to release a little bit. But the less you release, the more you dare to risk, the better. Binks getting a nose dive over that downhill. So much more speed than he. This is going to translate to a two-tenth of a second lead. And Binks right now with 10 more points can jump up into third almost on the rankings after being near last going into this map. But he needs to clutch the last jump. Brand seems to have found the flow of it. Landing near the right side, air brakes to stabilize the car there. Beautifully done. Heave looks like he has a good long. Missing at Mime! Looks like he's gonna get his 10 pointer here. Finally, Mime breaking through the rut. Binks jumping over the tire, just needs to get to the finish. It's chaos, Brad as well. It's pure chaos. They're scoring sixth and seventh here, and Heave is still respawning. But very good for Mime to see that he still can win around here, get 10 points on the board, and get a little bit closer. Nothing's over yet. But whew, I was not, I was not exaggerating when I said that. <laughs> that last jump is something else. Very, very tough to aim that. And you have to feel for the players. Trying to look at the hands right now to see if they're jittery. It looks like Wosau. It's a little jittery on his hands. Which is something you do not want. You want to feel very comfortable when you play keyboard. The tap should feel like an extension of your brain. But you can't really fault them as well. I'd be nervous if I was on the stage, and especially for Wosau, as this is the map Wosau chose in the map pack. I talked to him in the break room, and he said he mostly only had time to practice the maps from the first map pack. 
and this is one of them. There are two map packs from the two qualifiers, and Wosal mostly only played the ones from his qualifier, where he made it to this semifinal. The second qualifier map, he hadn't had a chance to take a look at pretty much at all. So he needs to score upwards of 30, probably close to 40 points here in the four rounds to have a good chance at winning. It's a multi-lap track, and it's symmetrical. It starts with a jump, an alley oop through this ring, and you want to go as low as you dare to go. Go past this quarter pipe, two neo slides, one to the left, one to the right, and then another neo slide and a fourth one into the multi-lap. Binks here crossing the split with a 28, a good first lap. Then he can jump across to this pizza slice and continue. He got a bit of a bad landing here. Wosal is in second, only three tons behind. And so he could score decently in this first round. Could even look to catch up to Binks, who has a bit of a bad jump here. Jumping a bit too far, but the gap is increasing. Wosal's not gotten a good jump himself. He's getting passed by Bren on the splits. Binks still solid up in first and will be uh, oh, sorry, three laps. Memory serves me wrong here. It's another third lap here. So nothing's done yet. But Binks has a six-tenth lead. Very clean with these Neo slides. Oh, that looked low. I think he jumped too low. Yeah, going too early off the quarter pipe. And that's how easily things can flip. Now Wosal up in first together with Bren. Close fight here. Bren has a bad setup, though. And this is where Wosal might snipe it away. The Neo slide full speed. Ooh. Daring to use all the space that was available on the track. A 124 and 10 points for Wosal on his own track. So far, it has been the standard. It has been the story. You pick the map, and you are just dominant on it. But you can look at the scoreboard there. The world record, a 122-17 by Gwen, who is a lot of people's favorite to win the tournament today. He's going to be playing in the second semifinal, but that looked like a pristine run. Try even imagining driving 2.6 seconds faster. And I do not understand how he does it. But for now, Quali one, semi one. <laughs> oh, Granati's missed the jump. And the crowd is back to its usual ways. Cheering for the players mid jump here. First split, first lap, Binks up in first. Onto the small pizza slice on the side of your mind, too slow. Not getting the drift right. And now. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing the energy here in this room. And it's only going to heat up throughout the night. If you're just getting into the stream, I hope you're enjoying and having a good time. So much more Trek Mania to be had in the next couple hours here. Legendary moments to witness in this eSport. Bren versus Binks, last lap. This is where Binks made a mistake in the previous round. Going too low, Richie going very low, trying to catch up. Look at this no side. Oh, does not align with the edge, and that is going to cost him two positions. But the battle for first ensues with Bren having a two-tenth of a second lead. Can Binks close in here? Looks like Richie will be passing at least team. But Bren does take the first place. And it's going to be Binks. Followed by Granati, Richie, Heave, Blust, Mime, and now Wosal in last year. Did not get into the work that round. And a very respectable time as well. 1.23.24 from Bren is very fast to drive on stage. Here we go again. You can notice that Mime, the only player to not do this first jump, and it has to do with needing to land in a wobble to initiate a drift past that first corner. If you don't do that, then it's not going to work out. You can see that Mime, despite going safe here, is not too far behind. And it's only on the first lap. He goes for that safe strat, but Bren right now, this is quite turning into something. He's at 83 points. He's only 37 points away from finalist. And he's up in first once more, across. Keeping more speed than Glust, extending his lead onto the quarter pipe once again. Landing decently, but not with that much speed. Getting the fourth gear quite late into this drift. Looking at the minimap, there's several arrows chasing him. Several competitors who all want this 10 pointer into the last lap here. Glast only trailing by 0.2, and the others a pack at about 0.6 behind Bran right now who's driving that same 123 pace. The last quarter pipe setting up a little early. 
little awkward, does he make it? Ooh. Just barely on the inside, Brandon now storming towards the finish for another 10-pointer here with a lot of momentum. You can see the intensity on his face. These corners matter more than in any tournament he's played before, and he takes another 10 and takes a sigh of relief and a quick nod of approval. He's feeling it right now, 93 points for Bren who's managed to get a little bit of a gap to Granati and Ritchie, and especially to fourth place here. Does not need to win this match, but getting top four is the goal, and he has a 20-point gap down to fourth place. So we have the fourth round of Wolzow's choice, who sits in fifth place, 71 points. Let's see how it unfolds. Bran could cross the 100-point threshold here. Getting a quite good nose dive. Granati going too low, but Brent, 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 sorry, clips the corner on the side. And will be slowed down too far, I believe, to catch up Wosal also with a mistake. The pressure's on. And right now, Glust is handling it the best. Jumping too far on the right side, though. I'm going to hold my tongue as it is now Binks up in first. And suddenly, Brent's early mistake is not that bad. He has actually passed another two players up into second, Bren. And with one more lap to go, Binks is not an impossible target either, but these Neo slides are so clean. And the spacing, using nearly all the tracks there, but still, somehow, despite driving these clean lines, Bren is closing the gap every checkpoint a few hundredths at a time into the last quarter pipe jump. Binks going quite high, and Bren Looking for that low jump to make the gap almost nothing. One car length away now for Bren on the right side to get a better left side setup here to get more speed into this Neo slide, which he misses critically, allowing Binks to keep this first place. But he was feeling the heat, and Bren will still cross up to 101 points total. One missed Neo slide there, and if he had it, he probably had the racing line to beat Binks to the line. So we have now completed our four maps, but remember this, the top seeded players in the semifinal, the players who won their qualifier to get here, all selected their maps in the later half. They wanted their map as the fifth, as the sixth, as the seventh. And these are now the favorites map choices that are gonna come through. All except Bren, Bren's already played his map. Granati has his map as the seventh one, and I believe Binks has his map as the sixth one. Uh, the fifth one, Memory does not serve me right whose pick this is, but it is Essential that we're going to have up next. A little calm before the storm here. Soon we will have our first grand finalist locked in. For some like Bren right now, must be feeling comfortable. Oh, it's this map. It's this map. Talking about quarter pipe jumps, this has one of the biggest ones in this tournament's history. And a really powerful bug slide. This has to have been picked by Richie, I imagine. Yeah, Richie's pick here. Had great performances on this in the qualifier. You want to get as many booster gates as you can in the start, and then this quarter pipe jump. You actually do not want to go too low here. Bren has had to respawn already. It's a lot more about the landing and the speed you carry. Look at Granari's landing here and how he can now use the speed down the slopes and now across the island hops, as I like to call them here. Starting with the jump into this downhill, followed by jump into this next downhill, lighting that up perfectly. And with all the speed, you can now set up for a bog slide through the forest on the grass here. Gets the grip there, but he's matched by Gloss, who also catches a lot of boosters. But here, the smooth steering of the steering wheel comes into fruition. Granati onto the last jump here with a lot of a lead. Haiv going low though, what a last jump from Heave to nearly close the gap, 800 of a second behind Granati. 51 flat in the first round here. And the top three players are still scoring well here. But Richie, who picked it, about middle of the field. Now for Wosal here, still want to finish, even if it's crawling into last place, you got to get this one pointer. Could make or break your journey here in Ascension. Let's take a look at the scoreboard now. Granati at 97, Bren at 105. We played till 120. That's the first benchmark for all the players to hit 120 and lock in finalists. He's hitting the wall a bit, but it's not that bad as he 
quickly stabilizes the quarter pipe jump. Oh, has to respawn, goes to the left too early. It's so far up this hill that you have to reach. And there's actually been a lot of respawns for the Dritchy up in first. On his own map choice. Together with Bran, together with Granati, the leaders of this match right now, the favorites in the predictions. All across this platform, who's gonna get the best bug slide? You wanna land early with the back wheels on this downhill slope. Bran, very clean bug slide, catching these boosters. Extending his lead to Wosau, jumping a lot though. Wosau, maybe with a better setup for this last quarter pipe. Does he dare to go low? Granati's name tag is shown at the bottom. He might be sniping through, and he will. But it's Bren with a 10. It's Bren fending off Granati, saying this first place is mine right now. And Bren puts himself within just five points of finalist. Could hit it in this next round. Finalist does not mean getting to the final. Finalist means completing your journey to 120 points, where afterwards you must win one round. It's a little bit confusing the terminology, but getting to finalist is only half the job done. Afterwards, you have to win a round. So Bren here, he only needs to score five points at least to make that happen. But he has made quite the mistake, and it's going to be hard to find three more positions. To score five points. Ooh, especially with a landing like that. It's glossed up at first with Wolsau. Into the bug slide. Granati's up there too. Granati could get just about equal to Brennan points right now with a clean ending. He's looking for it. Last jump low. Gloss going high. Granati with another snipe. 50.7. A, sp a spectacular time here. And you can see now just how much that mistake from Bren cost him three points, only getting to 100 and 18. And we're already at 115 now. These two are battling back and forth. We have the fourth and final round on this. And not the best results from Richie yet, but he is in the top four with one more round to play on his own map. Bren going early, oh, almost hitting the final sign, but that is a great start for Bren here. And though he doesn't need first place anymore, he could still deny the others a lot of points with a start like this. Everything has gone right so far in this round. Trying to land this downhill. Does he get the next one? That looked awkward. He might bounce a bit. He might slow down a bit. Yeah, the others are way faster. Richie and Bix are going to come through here. Maybe in the bug slide, they might catch up all the way to Bren. Looking like they are a little bit behind, though. Still trailing. Bren in this last part to get finalist, to get the first finalist spot. Does he go too low there? Does he go too low? Clips will be passed by Binks. Granati is finalist too. It's a double finalist. Richie at 97, Binks at 100. Mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen. Four spots out of the semifinal will be claimed in the grand final. Two players have a chance in this next round, on this next map. This is picked by Binks, who just hit 100 points. He's 20 points away from getting there himself. If Binks wins three rounds in a row, he will do it himself. But this match is drawing to a close. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, okay. By name, I did not remember this map. But if you've seen this map once, you will definitely remember the ending of it. It has a very risky ending, and also a risky jump in the start. It's bobsleigh, and in this bobsleigh, you can actually do an ice slide onto the wall here to get a 360 of sorts and then landing in an ice slide towards the next wall. Glust, Richie, and Granati getting it the best. Bren is also in the mix there. And now straightening the car on the plastic. Granati, very close to first place. Does go wide here around this jump. And now you have to line up on the right side of this Ascension logo. It's only a little bit of track that's available to you. All four players make it. Bren and Granati still both with a chance before the ending. 
You can jump very low and into this finish, and you have to risk it. Only first place is enough to claim your spot in the Ascension Final. Onto the last jump, Blust, the only player between Bren and the final. Does he get the last down and into the finish here correctly? Slows down, Bren misses it! It's Glust who snipes it away, who denies him. And a little bit of frustration from Bren there on the face cam. They will still keep scoring points, but they only need to win one round. That's how this format now works. One spot away there on the scoreboard and Glust giving himself and the others in the field another chance here. A lot of players now approaching that 100 point mark. And if Brandon Granati cannot close this out, it's going to get really, really intense. You can see this 360 setup here again. Bren might have missed it a little bit, but the point is to get pushed towards the bobsleigh wall and then stabilize. And he actually has it almost perfectly here. A little bit awkward on the exit though. And now might have to go for the inside line. Does opt to do that. But Glust, Heave, and Binks all have more speed and they're gonna extend up ahead. Not at all easy to win from this position, but that ending, anything can still happen. You have to slow down perfectly in that uphill ramp and get barely threading the needle into the finish directly. We've lost one player, it's only two players ahead of him now. Has to hesitate a bit on the drift. Going wide, hitting the wall, trying to save it, I think. A different setup, Glust versus Binks. Glust again, I believe, with a perfect finish. And though Glust didn't pick this map, he is looking very relieved right now. Look at the intensity. <laughs> oh my god. He is really feeling under pressure right now. But driving so well at the same time. That's the thing about these tournaments. It brings out the best in the players. They've never had so much at stake and we're witnessing some of the best track mania that we've had in a tournament so far. Glust once again, clean landing. Up near first, Bren is there as well, Granati is there as well. Heave off to the side, one player lost in the fight. And now Granati versus Glust up first. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, is it going to go the way everyone predicted? Granati with a tenth of a lead. Make that two tenths, a lot of speed. Flicking the steering wheel onto the right side here to get that drift set up into the last corner now. It's all in Granati's own hands. Glust has had two fantastic endings. Can he get a third? Back for Granati, slowing down. Trying to get the finish! Bron! Bron takes it away, the first spot in the finals. The home crowd favorite. Gets his chance to snipe away in the first round of this map, but he claims it now to everyone's standing ovation here in the stadium in the Sud de France arena. And for the others, it is back to the drawing board. The rounds continue. The last round of Banks' map choice. Wanna make you pay attention to this. Richie has hit 118 points. He's two points away from finalist mode. Granati still in finalist mode with one round to go before his own map, and this is not going to be a good landing. Granati is going to have to wait for his own map to have a chance of closing out. Richie could hit finalist, Gloss could hit finalist, Binks could also hit finalist here. We could have four more finalists going into the next map. If the positions remain as they are right now and Gloss scores well, we could have a quadruple finalist mode. Binks right now, high intensity. This is the map he chose all the way back as the second map chosen in this match. Hoping that it would pay dividends in this moment right here versus Richie. He needs the 10, he needs the 10 pointer. Binks gets it! That's one finalist. Where's Richie? Gloss, two finalists. We have two finalists going into this, oh, three rather with Renati as well. No, we have four, we have four. I don't know if the crowd is aware yet. It's a quadruple finalist mode. And maybe it's just me who finds this super fascinating. Maybe I'm an idiot right now, but we so rarely have a quadruple finalist mode. Everyone adjusting their posture, stretching their hands a little bit. We are going on to a classic Serrator map. This was built for one of the first Serrator Cups in Trekmania 2020 um, when he brought back the format and now he made a remake of it. And this, Granati chose it as his first pick. It has a lot of precision, 
And I think it favors Granati well, but the pressure's on. It could all be over in three rounds here. If you do not get first and the others do, three rounds and you're out of the tournament. And your chances at the biggest prize pool in this game's history is out. This, this map notably has a very difficult last quarter pipe jump. So nothing is decided until that very last jump, but it's quadruple finalist. Heave, 10 points away. Oh, Binks making a mistake. The first finalist to make a mistake here, I believe. Wosal and Garotti still up there. Richie as well. Oh, not Wosal. Uh, Glossar is the finalist. Wosal, not yet hit finalist mode. So Wosal challenging Granati right now. Missing that though. Granati up in first right now. By quite a lot as well, I believe. He only has that quarter pipe jump now left to contend with. And this is a really difficult one to hit. You have to jump all the way from here into the sky and line up in between the cogs of this ring. Does he get it? Granati is going to lock his spot in the finals and relief on the face cam for him as well. Standing ovation from the crowd as well. He can breathe easily knowing he's going to have a chance later on. The two favorites for most predictors going in have made it. And now there's still two spots remaining in the finals. Will it be Gluss? Will it be Richie? Will it be Binks? Or maybe Heave, Wosal, Nine. They all have a chance. It's not over yet. Heave picked the eighth map. If he can somehow extend this three more rounds, he could have a chance to close it out on his own map choice. That's the last map in the pack. Oh, good start for him though. And good start for Wosal. Two of the non-finalists. If you want this match to go on, these are the players that you need to see in first and second to deny the other finalists from locking in their spots. Wosal missed this next time system here in the previous round, but now it's good. He gets through cleanly. And he again, oh, okay. A little bit shaky, only has that quarter pipe jump left to go. Through the cycle, barely makes the left side. Now the jump up into the sky and you have to release right about now. Does he make it? That looks beautiful, Wosau. 114 points for him. Extending the match, postponing the inevitable. He needs to win two more in a row to get there himself and he can totally do that. Mime as well scoring really well here. It's not over yet. It is not over yet. It's anything but over. And if you are one of these finalists who got there quite early, like Gloss, Richie, and Binks right now, and you're sitting playing round after round, you're not closing in your spot, and the others are getting just four and five points away from finalists, you have to be feeling the pressure. You have to be feeling like it's slipping, like it's running away from you. Richie just missed the first jump, has to wait out an entire round now and hope that no spots get claimed. Wosau still in first, up through the checkpoint though, a mistake there, and a little bit of a grimace on the face cam. The last heave, first and second. Heave, missing the transition a little bit. Glust with a golden opportunity right now to go into the finals. He will not know it on the checkpoint splits yet, and maybe that is for the better, because if he knew, he could probably hardly aim this jump. Going for it, will Glust make it? He saw himself as an underdog. He didn't think he had a chance. He lines it up. The jump is clean. Glust to the finals. He did not think he had it. A lot of a chance, he was here for the fun. He started playing in 2016 after watching Serenator Cups and dreamt of playing on stage himself. And now he's in the grand finals. So, so much fun for Gloss there to get that spot. And very unfortunate for Heave to not score here. Could have gotten very close to finalist. We will play one more round here. What Heave and Mime needs is either one of them to win this round. Heave, probably the best chance he stands is his own map choice. One round away from that. Richie, Binks, and Wosau are all going to try to close out now. Binks with a small mistake, though, losing about 
Wosau up in first. Also did not see him as a likely candidate to qualify to the grand final. Missed this transition last time. Gets a good jump here. Has to get all the way up on the right side now. Onto the ice. Setting up the quarter pipe jump. How much is the split going to be? Mime is only 0.3 away on that previous checkpoint. Does he have the speed? Richie has a lot of speed, but Richie gets clipped by the cogwheel. Wosau with a chance. A golden ticket to the finals. If you release correctly, Mime is there. Mime is there. Mime snipes, maybe. Mime takes it away. And Mime can hardly believe what he did, but he postpones the match. Does he get finalist? Does he get, he gets finalist as well. It is five finalists going on to Heave's map. And Wosau cannot believe it. Wosau cannot believe it. He's kicking himself right now. Knowing you have the chance right there. Oh, heartbreak for Wosau. Drove such a clean run as well. But it's not over yet. This is where it will be over though. For four of these players, one lucky person can claim their spot here. And the thing about this map is it has a very distinct ending where you do an ice 360 in between some trees and some snow. And he just happens to be very good at this. Richie as well, to be fair, the ice players. But there's a lot of other mechanics at play as well early on into the map. But it might be decided right here in this cinematic where you see it. And this is the final uphill to the ascension. And indeed to the finals. 50 second map, here we go. One round to decide it all. Perhaps Mime could still deny. Oh, okay. No mistakes yet. Small bug slide on the grass there. Mime is last though. Richie with a small mistake there on the penalty grass. Binks getting the best of it. Wosau still there, still with a hope and a dream. On to the ice uphill now, it's only really that 360 left to go. He's getting closer and closer to Binks. The 360 will happen after this ice slide here. You have to flick 360 between this gap of trees and Wosau clips and crashes and it's Binks who's likely to take it here, has to straighten and then get up to the finish and Binks will be the fourth and final qualifying player to the Ascension Grand Final from the first semi-final. Absolutely insane. Almost punches. Lost there by accident, I believe, in his celebration, but what a heat. What a heat. And that's how quickly it can flip. You get your chances, and it comes down to 0.2 of a second where Mime gets a slightly better jump. It comes down these small corner clips crashing the trees to make or break whether you make it to the finals but what an opening match what an opening match of this tournament and the second semi-final was just as anticipated with some of the favorites like Carl Jr. like Gwen to win the tournament as a whole but these players put up a grand finals performance already and now you get to see the best part of Trackmania the camaraderie between all the players. So much mutual respect between everyone on that stage. The journey to get there and the level they played at. On these, has to be said, so difficult maps that Serrator has put up. But that is the result. Bren, Granati, Glust, and Binks will be moving on to the final. Richie, Wosal, even Mime will be out despite a good performance. But a little bit of a driller to the fans there, to his friend Granati from Mime. I think what we're gonna have now soon is the interview with some of the players and um, then a short break as they set up for semi-final number two, but Twitch chat, did you enjoy that? That was pretty crazy, no? I'm gonna pull up so I can see you guys. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy that and let me tell you, I've been casting Trek Mania events for the past three years in my bedroom when I lived up with my parents and then in my streaming room when I lived for myself, but casting in an arena and feeding off the crowd is amazing, the energy. And uh, I am I am just so happy to be here. So uh, I would like to give a huge thanks to Serrator, who is the person on the left in the webcam right now, person hosting this event, and the other Trackmania tournaments he's done. And his production team for, for doing all this, for giving us the chance to enjoy Trackmania at such a scale. And 
If you aren't following Raider stream already, you should. Uh, or perhaps tell your friends that this is happening, you know. Help the tournament in any way you can. Absolutely spectacular stuff. And you can see where I'm perched up. The scene is uh, down here, the stage. And I have a grand view of everything as well as a uh, photographer taking some pictures. But, uh, but wow, I need to get some water soon and then get settled in for the next one. Maybe take some pictures with some fans and then, then get back into the booth. And uh, I can't quite see it, but right behind me is also the German caster booth. But let's now try our best to understand French and see what Serrator is saying. Maybe uh, phone in his audio once again. Should have it. I don't know if you guys can hear Serrator properly, but... We are going to have a break, actually. A short break, and we will see what this uh, countdown timer says, how much time I get to, uh, to settle in. But I think I will uh, take the opportunity to be right back, everybody. When we return, semi-final number two, Carl Jr. is playing, Gwen is playing. We also have, I can give you the full list, actually. Uh, Chalik, Offi, Massa, Arthanir, Coco, and Otak. That is your lineup for semi-final number two. So, uh, guys, uh, I will... Be right back. It's about 15 minutes, I believe, until um, until we uh, go back for some of my final number two. So 15 minutes, get some popcorn, get some drinks. I will do the same, and I'll see you guys in a little, little bit. All right, everybody, we are back after the first semi-final. Taking on semi-final number two now of Ascension. This is the biggest um, Trackmania tournament that we've ever had in terms of prize pool. We'll also get my camera back here so you can see me. There we go. I'm a streamer. I can figure this out. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. People, hey. If you're watching from home, if you're chilling, maybe you're watching this after the fact, after it's over. Catching up on what you missed out on. This is an amazing event so far. It's a crowd of about 5,000, if not more, French people all gathering to celebrate the best Trackmania players in the world on absurd maps. I can already tell you guys, I will not have my, a lot of voice left by the end of this night, but I don't need to. I don't need to. My vocal cords only need to last for another four hours and then they can be as broken as ever. In the break, I had a time to take um, a couple of pictures with the fans. There are so many people that are right by the, the booth that I'm sitting in here and everyone is so nice. It's actually so cool. Like, I stream and I talk to people with usernames and then I meet them and they're like, oh, you're that guy or oh, you're this guy. For example, I met Josh, who made the Trackmania AI just now. And it's it's so nice. It's so nice to get faces and, like, talk to people. So, um, I don't have the opportunity to do that with everyone in chat. That would be uh, a lot, but but I appreciate you guys a lot. I'm, I'm imagining our interactions would be just as wholesome. So, hearts. Hearts tat. It makes me feel very appreciated. I don't know. It's a little overwhelming. But... Enough softening up, let's get into and prepare for the second semi-final. If you're just joining in, if you clicked the stream and you thought uh, we'd be playing Trackmania and you're seeing this and you're not sure what it is, I'll explain it to you, but first we have some interviews from the players in the previous semi-final, the four players that qualified to the grand final. Starting with Bran, we got first place. And comment t'as vu ton match? Comment t'as roulé ton match? Comment tu étais en termes d'état d'esprit? On t'a vu très dominateur. Tu étais dans ce truc. Est-ce que tu peux nous donner un peu des infos sur ton match? Ouais, bah je suis content dans l'ensemble de comment j'ai joué. Honnêtement, ça s'est bien passé. Hyper stressant au début. Tout le monde était tellement serré au niveau des points et tout. Donc heureusement que j'ai commencé à en gagner pas mal. Mais ouais, franchement, je suis content. Va falloir peut-être mieux jouer quand même pour la finale. Je pense qu'on était possiblement un peu en dessous de l'autre demi. Donc va falloir se griller. Mais on est cool. 
Et c'est yeah, pas l'état d'esprit quand happy. on so est too. à ce point, dans un moment de stress intense, parce que right. l'esprit est vide. À quoi oh, tu penses parce que tu dans cet awesome. espace finaliste Parce qu'on avait vraiment l'impression que tu étais dans la zone. En vrai, j'étais dans la zone, je pensais juste à mes rounds. Euh, J'ai vu Glass pop off deux fois quand il m'a snipe. Ça m'a pas énervé. Brennan a un weird strat où il first picked the map to get a good start to the finals, it didn't work. On te retrouve là dans cette finale, je peux te dire que le mur bleu est derrière toi. On voyait énormément de gens dans le public. Really stressful, but I just started winning. Grenadine, it might not have been good enough for the finals. What a pleasure! What a round from you! Like what a map! Like you, you play really well. How does it feel? How do you feel about this match? We saw you really dominant in Lille, and now you're also dominant in Montpellier. Uh, yeah, that's great, of course. Uh, it's great to be here at all. It was my main goal first, and now being in the grand final is absolutely insane. With this amazing crowd, so many great people, it's insane, to be honest. And, uh, that's, that's enough to get the crowd going. And for the match, I just tried to play my game, and in the end it worked out, and I'm going to do the same for the grand final, and I will give my very best for sure. Incroyable, du coup je lui ai dit uh, que c'était assez impressionnant sa performance après ce qu'il avait montré à Lille, il était Renaud extrêmement dominant aussi à Montpellier et que là, lui il se sent extrêmement bien, il est très content du public, très content du bruit du public et qu'aussi, bah, là, son plan de jeu dans cette demi-finale c'était de jouer assez safe et qu'il va faire le même plan de jeu en grande finale pour aller essayer d'aller choper le pactole Well played Granady, we see you in finals, thank you again for this amazing performance Et ensuite, celui-là il a tremblé, il nous a montré un match, un match incroyable, Glass comment tu te sens Explosé de tension parce que c'est un match à tension et surtout bah le cash prize le fait que c'est une compétition de fou bah ça fait ça fait stresser quand tu t'es senti. Il a dit you know what I don't think I can get to the finals but il y a eu beaucoup d'émotions. I'm here to have fun. C'est un match il fallait trouver la motivation. Playing from the crowd and enjoy my time. C'était compliqué comme Bren a dit c'était très serré donc il fallait trouver la motivation. C'est vrai qu'à la fin du match bah il y a la tension montait énormément donc c'est vrai que moi j'ai eu aussi beaucoup d'émotions. Et voilà, au final, je suis très heureux. C'est malheureusement aussi le format qui est dur et donc qui ne peut pas plaire à tout le monde. Mais moi, en tout cas, je suis très heureux. J'ai réussi ce finaliste et je suis qualifié en finale. Donc euh, voilà. Incroyable. Est-ce que c'est pas une pression supplémentaire Parce que tu as quand même commencé voilà. Trackmania. Tu m'as dit que tu étais hyper à fond dans les maps de Zerator. Et en plus, là, tu arrives sur l'une des plus grandes scènes de l'histoire de ces compétitions Trackmania. En plus, avec ta famille dans le public, tu as réussi à prendre toutes ces pressions. Et au final, tu l'as transformé en force. Bah, c'est sûr, oui. J'ai commencé avec euh, match, le emotions, happy to be here, and the format that is hard. C'est ce qui m'a donné envie de jouer au jeu. Et oui, au fil des événements, la pression, on apprend aussi, on essaye de l'apprendre à la, à la gérer. Et puis voilà, c'est comme ça aussi qu'on grandit et qu'on essaie de jouer de mieux en mieux. Bah, on espère que tu seras immense et que tu continueras à grandir en finale. Bravo, Glast. On se retrouve bientôt. Et le dernier. Now, Banks, the le clutch. dernier. Quel match! And a quadruple on a quadruple finalist. Bucks, mais encore, One round. Là, franchement, vous avez tous fait, vous nous avez donné un match incroyable. Comment tu t'es, comment tu l'as ressenti Alors moi, ça a été vraiment très compliqué, surtout le début compliqué. du match. Compliqué, compliqué. It started complicated. Quasiment pas de points. Quasiment dernier, je crois. J'ai réussi à remonter à la But fin, mais même end. à la fin, ça, ça, ça rentrait pas. Et j'ai réussi à un calibre du coup. He started playing better. Very content. good. Mais euh, ça a été laborieux quoi. <rire> Et on, comme dirait de rugby, c'est un peu que le début. C'est quoi les attentes en finale tu vas, tu vas les manger. This is my, this is my ah bah guess. là, c'est un autre match qui commence. Donc je vais, faire, enfin, je vais tout donner pour, pour gagner. Et remporter l'ascension. On sera tous derrière toi, comme toutes les personnes. <rire> ça se voit que tu t'es regardé en mode. Guys, it's a French event. We're gonna have to make do with bon, what we can in terms of translations. Pour, pour, pour présenter les prochains. <rire> Demi-finaliste et moi je vais, je vais te retrouver, je prends, je prends l'avion et j'arrive euh, Adrien. Uh, now they get to be on the opposite je suis side. Pour cette Watch compétition. J'ai hâte de jouer et je vais vibrer avec vous ce soir. Let's have some fun in Montpellier. Shout out to everyone coming over and uh, cheer for us. Ce soir, je veux montrer que je fais partie des meilleurs. Je suis venu ici pour m'amuser. La dernière fois que j'avais cet état d'esprit, c'était à Bercy. Et on sait comment ça s'est terminé pour moi. Dans une compétition, on se souvient souvent du vainqueur. Okay. Bon, M'oubliez pas quand même. Je ne vais pas me contenter de la scène, je vais essayer d'aller jusqu'au bout. Je suis rendu vieux, mais je vais tout donner. Je suis jeune, mais je vais quand même tout donner. Oh. <rire> <rire> and Gwen, there at the end. Carl Jr. and Gwen are sort of everyone's favorites. If you're a betting man in a Trickmania eSport event, it's usually a bad idea to bet against Carl Jr. Sort of a, a famous quote, if you bet against Carl Jr., most of the time you're gonna lose because Carl Jr. just keeps winning events that he takes seriously. He has five World Championship wins, four Serrator Cups wins, uh, maybe even five at this point. Uh, too many Trackmania Grand League wins to count. 
this guy is the goal of the game. And um, at this point, he could really just, you know, lock in his legacy even further with winning the biggest prize pool tournament the game has ever seen. He hasn't had a chance to yet. The biggest prize pool tournament in this game's history was in 2006. But now he has a chance with the record being broken by Serrator. The tournament in 2006 was a $50,000 tournament. And a lot of people are like, well, Carl doesn't practice that much. There's other players that have gotten up to the scene that play better, they have better PBs. Everything looks on paper as if they can beat Carl. But when it matters, when the clutch factors come through, it's just Carl has this additional gear, this competitive spirit. And what a banner from the crowd here. That's what we're seeing. Merci pour ce ascension. Serrator saying it's exceptional. This is a work of art. It's now thanking the crowd for the reception. <laughs> oh, he's getting a picture. Smile chat. Did you blink? <laughs> I think we might have to do a redo. All right, enough joking around. I think they're now getting serious. I think we're getting serious. The second semifinals are about to be underway, but you can see this right now. Ubisoft Nadeo have put Trackmania on a discount for Club 1 year and Club 3 years. If you want to pick up the game, it's also going to be even cheaper in January. Um, worth noting if you want to wait. Um, but it is on sale right now. The second semifinals. You have Chalik, you have Offi, you have Massa, Gwen, Arthanir, Carl Jr., Coco, and Otak. Otak is just coming off a tournament win in XP Evo. Chalik coming up with a win in Lyon, the first qualifier. Carl Jr. and Gwen are favorites, pretty much. Afi won the last Serrator Cup. Like, this is just so star-ridden. It's stacked. It's like the Milky Way galaxy. There's just so many stars. I don't know what I'm saying. All right. Here we go. The player introductions. Afi won last year's Serrator Cup, took down the Titans, Carl Jr. and uh, Bren, who teamed up. Or was it Carl Jr. and Pac? Either way. Afi and Gwen won that one. And now he stands to try to win the Ascension tournament as well. His favorite map is actually Lantern, which we've not seen from many other players. And if that one makes it through, then it would be very fun to see. Arthanir, pay close attention to this man. I think he might be making the finals. A lot of people don't believe in Arthanir when they see this field. But he has a lot of practice, and he has um, a lot of good PBs. Carl Jr., the favorite. It's wins all around. Back-to-back -back champions in World Cups and Trackmania Grand Leagues. He is the GOAT, undisputed GOAT. Can he do it here, though, today? Truly cement the legacy once and for all. Let's see it. Also playing from Canada, one of the only North American players that we've had at the top level for this long as Trickmania's most European game. You still have Carl Jr., the GOAT from Canada. And now Coco from France was able to clinch a qualifying spot. Very clutch round. Got the uh, fourth seed, I believe, to get into the grand final. And other than that, his biggest accomplishments have been in the Cupra Cup and also in the World Tour. But really, Coco here, this is already one of his biggest accomplishments, in my opinion. 
getting this far. And Glenn here, he has just inhuman pace on every map. Glenn is a player, if you watch a couple of days, if you watch, you don't really see him that often. You see him in the Grand League. But believe me and everyone else when I say, Glenn is a favorite just because his pace is unmatched. There will be rounds where he will probably win here by a second and confuse everyone. He might drive World Records in match. Like, this man started playing Germania at four years old. He is now 19. He started playing at four years old and he was already pretty good. Massa here, longtime player, has been with Germania through the highs and the lows of the game. Has also had some recent successes, probably his best seasons ever. Just these last couple of ones, getting second place in the Grand League regular season, uh, as well as just overall finding more consistency. Used to be known as a more risky player, which would take a lot of risk, crash a lot. Now he's sort of matured in play style and, and plays way more consistently, which has proven to be very effective. Otak here, coming off of a win in XP Evo. Recent land with a bunch of great tech players. Otak was the winner and uh, his first big solo win there. Other than that, has played the Serrator Cups several times. Has also played the uh, Grand League Challengers and gotten first place there. So. His favorite map though, Pirarive, is probably not getting played. It's one of the longer maps, one of the complicated ones. It is going to get banned away, I think. Also a uh, really strong candidate to get into the finals here. And then Chalik, a player I don't think anyone could have expected to win the first Ascension tournament in Lyon. He got first place there ahead of Uffi, uh, and sorry, ahead of Binks. And with that, made it his greatest win in his Trekmania career. Could also win here again today. He does lack a little bit of pace in terms of personal bests against the others, but again, it's all about consistency, consistently scoring points. That's what will get you there. And Premier Etoile's his favorite map. I got word that he has played his favorite map practicing for 45 hours for this tournament. There are 25 maps, but he has 45 hours on this one map, Premier Etoile's. If he is allowed to pick this map, he is going to be the player to watch. Premier Etoile's. It's the map to look for, and a lot of people have practiced it a lot. Like, Lust said he had 15 hours on it. But now we are going to bring the players out soon for picks and bans. If you're not sure how this works, every player gets to ban one map, starting with the worst seeded player banning a map, and then the best seeded player gets to ban last. After that, the best seeded player gets to pick first and gets to place the map wherever they want. Granati was first pick last time. He placed his map seventh. I thought that was a bit late. I think placing your map sixth is probably the best spot. Uh, depends on how much you score, of course, but... We also saw Brand just pick first pick, so... You can do a lot of things here. Here we go. I am going to give you guys some serrator audio so you can hear the banter, the French banter here. Not sure if I... There we go. This is what everyone is here. And uh, I cannot understand much of it, so I'm going with what I can. But we are actually seeing the players on stage already. They're, they're getting some warm-up in. So uh, when the crowd laughs, I just do a little chuckle with them. When the crowd boos, I boo. When they clap, I clap. See, now we're clapping. I'm with it. I'm with it. Yeah, I'm down flat. I understand French. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no. It's good we uh, get to have an English cast of this. Usually what we would do is we would all sit in Discord, the English-speaking Trackmania community. We would sit in Discord and have this Discord viewing party of the tournament every year. 
with like a hundred people in the same Discord voice call, all rooting for the same players. But now, I get to sit here and cast it for you. So this could be the, the gathering spot. But we have them all here. We're gonna have the pick and ban initiated. Let's see what happens. We'll attack first to ban. Not understanding the banter here. Uh, banning the Pharaoh map with the lighthouse. This is the one where Surveyor placed upside down spectators as a bridge. So now the seventh seed into this semifinal will be banning a map. Coco. Oh, he banned the trial map. I couldn't quite catch that. The trial map, trial logo is being taken away. Now Carl, sixth seed. What will he uh, import is how you say it. The wheel map is being taken away. There's also one more wheel map. Then turn the, the Neo slide map banned away by Arthanir. Also makes sense if you're not comfortable with Neo slides and pace there. Glenn's ban. What does he want to take away? Banning Premier Etois. And the crowd is not pleased, and Chalik is not pleased either. That is the map that Chalik had played for 45 hours. And he will not be seeing it here in the semi. Plastico banned away by Massa. Understandable. I think we have two more bands coming through here. Troisième Etoile as well banned away by Alfie, the other Etoile map. So not a good day for uh, for the Etoile maps, they're banned away in both semis. Chalik now getting to ban a map and pick one. <gasps> no! No! Uh, it's not that bad, but that map is the only one with pyramids. Um, a little bit of personal caster bias. And he picks Plastic Cut as the first, oh, Glastic Cut as the first one. Rather. Very interesting. As the seventh map, mind you. So Chalik, first seed, gets to choose where in the rotation the map will be. And to reiterate this point, Essential map 6 for Afi. To reiterate this point, the reason they're picking them late in the rotation is to get them when they hit 120 points. Picking it around 6 and 7 get, gets you 120 points-ish and finalist mode to clutch them up. Ooh, and Masa picking second position for his map. Maybe wants one map before to warm up a bit and then get good points on his map, a hard map as the second one. Oh, 
And we're starting with the pipe map here again. Gwen going for the same strategy as Branded, picking. I wish I heard how he said it. De Rouag as the first map. <laughs> Can I have to bear with my friends here, everybody? But, uh. Oh! Pizza map! The newly built map from Serrator was left open, and Arthanir takes it. It is what it sounds like. It's a pizza map. Taken. Wait, what did he pick? Oh, that's the fifth one. I thought he said second. La Sans Silicon. And Red Conceal. This is a really hard map, actually, so far. So far, this is like so difficult to drive all the maps. There's going to be a lot of response. They're going full for difficult. Grotesque. The same map that Glust went for. Otax also really good on that. All right, so we have our map pack. Pipe map into the quarter pipe jump, followed by the red conceal, which has a very tough speed check. And then the maps around the four to five range, the pizza map. You also have the first and second seed maps being sixth and seventh. Glusty Cut, and I believe it was. Ooh, Essential by Alfie. Memory's gonna be hard here. But guys, if you've never watched a Trick Mania match like this before, and I know some people haven't, here's everything you need to know. The players gain points every round. If you get first place in a round, you get 10 points. Second place is eight. And then what follows is six points, five points, four, three, two, one, based on your positions. You need to reach 120 total, and then after reaching 120, win one round. You can complete 120 pretty soon, but if you don't win that last round, you don't claim your spot in the grand final. This is a semifinal with eight players, and the top four make it to the grand final. It is really tough. We saw in the last semifinal, there were players that got to finalist mode quite early, and then could not close out their last round, and therefore not make it to the final, like Richie. One of the first players to get to 120 points, but couldn't win the one round he needed to. This format is very intense, and the players therefore take their best maps around that range where they're going to be at 120. Here are the predictions. I predicted Gwen. We see Serrator with Carl Jr. as a prediction. Etual with Gwen. The um, Brazilian Portuguese stream with Carl Jr. And the German stream picking Massa for their prediction. I'm not sure. I'm not a prophet. I got Bren right, though, on the first prediction. We'll see if Gwen here is going to be the winner of the semi-final, but more importantly, top four do advance. That is what you need to know. And a lot of people might be surprised, like, why is Carl Jr., this GOAT everyone talks about, why is he sixth seed? Why is he not seed one, rank one, god emperor of Trekmania? The reason is, is that he had food poisoning when he qualified for Ascension. And so, in the first one, he had food poisoning and couldn't quite play that well. In the second one, where he tried, he did pull through, but he also then did not go very far in the knockout format. So, despite those two things happening, he still made it here to the finals. I talked to him, he arrived a couple of days ago, said he was feeling great, but he named two names. And I'm gonna tell you which two names this is that he was scared of. Gwen and Arthur here. He said these were the two players that's going to give him the toughest challenge. So if you want to keep a lookout here at what the what what the goat himself is quite scared about. He said also maybe Otak. These are the players to take a look at and we're starting on a terribly difficult map. And I can't miss how they said it. The dirt pipe map is going to be my best guess. This is just straight up a trial map. 
where you drive on pipes, try to carry high speed, and we are off to the races in the second semifinal. Get some hype in the chat. As the crowd now warms up to another spectacle, the first semifinal was a blast. And let's hope this one delivers as well for the biggest Trackmania prize pool tournament that we've ever had. See the players here, a little bit shaky, one respawn there. And that's a 22 second time loss for that player. Not gonna have much of an impact in this first round. But Gwen on his own map choice here, across the first couple of pipes, gets a better start than everyone else except Carl. But Carl missing that transition a bit, meaning Gwen will be running away into first place. Does he make the jump through the Ascension logo? Does as well. And these are the two players that Carl called out. Gwen and Arthur up at first and second. Onto the last pipe now. A little bit shaky for Gwen, who might miss this last jump, and he does indeed. But Arthur will be able to pick up this first 10 pointer. And there's Otak to claim eight. Carl Jr. getting six as well as the overlay is not quite updating yet. Let's hope it saves the scores. So we're now just waiting for them to roll in. Um, let's see if this did indeed come through, but the checkpoint splits are not. So that's going to be something we'll deal with. At least it's recording the results correctly. And uh, I will simply tell you who is in first and who is in last. Carl Jr. with the best start. You can skip across here, jumping onto that other curve if you want, but it's very risky. Coco with a respawn. Otak and Carl into this checkpoint leading the field, but now going so slow and you kind of have to, unless your name is Gwen and you feel like risking it all. But the risk does not really pay off as Carl and Otak both beat him in that segment overall. Now only a few hundreds apart here. Carl going too wide on the pipe there, though not getting the downhill to keep his car stable. And Gwen going from third to first through the last couple of checkpoints here, carrying the speed. Is going to go for the risky jump. Oh, no way! Gwen is a menace. I do not, I, I cannot put into words how difficult that pipe jump is. Usually people just go straight and then clip the edge, but he lines up slightly left to land, carrying full speed on the left pipe. This is a skip you can do, it's just so risky. He, he just beat a lot of players here personal bests in the match. And I think it might even be world record. I think this might have broken the world record on the map, and this is just the pace that I'm talking about for Gwen, and the reason people are scared is he's just unmatched in terms of pace. Did not catch what the world record was going in, but that is a monster time. <laughs> How does he do this? It's the biggest tournament we... Okay, so you see he, he is sometimes risking a lot and sometimes paying the price for it, but how do you go into a tournament, and it's the biggest Trackmania tournament of all time, in the second round you drop a world record on a map that everyone else has grinded. Like, it's just mesmerizing. And he's probably going to come back through here. Yeah, he crashed. I want you to know, we are witnessing Gwen with a crash right now. Dominantly up in first place. Like, it's mind-numbing. It's mind-boggling. How he does this, he makes it look so effortless. But it doesn't come from nowhere. Let's first see if he can get this last jump. Lining up wide, just smoothly into that curve. And now carrying the speed onto the pipe. Not going to go for the super risky one, but going out on the right, he did respawn, and Massa is there to pick up the 10-pointer as Gwen disappears from view, but he will be coming through in seventh. But I was going to say, if you're wondering how this uh, comes to be, Gwen started playing Trackmania at four years old. His dad showed him the game, and there's a video of him playing at four years old. He's now 19 or 20 around roundabouts, but at four years old, he was doing things like slide canceling, like air brakes, like racing lines at four years old. Like these are ingrained into his brain. The same way, you know, a chess grandmaster prodigy kid just has such a different understanding of the game. And uh, it's, a, it's a treat to watch anytime he plays. And uh, compared to the practice numbers that we heard from some of the other players, Gwen, when I asked him, said he had about one to two hours of practice on every map. 
And if you compare that to the 45 hours that we heard from another map and whatnot, it's even more <laughs> spectacular. <laughs> so yeah. Not to uh, hype it up too much here, but to give you guys context, it, it is spectacular. Arthnir again with a good run through here. Glenn, though, is he going to look for the super risky jump? Onto the pipe, missing the jump onto it. Has to release here to catch it. Arthnir landing and might be keeping it. In first place, another 10 points for him. And now the checkpoint splits are working. Coco followed by Otak, Gwen, Chalik, Afi, Masa, and Carl. So not the best first map for Gwen. Could have probably opted to score more than 19 points on his own map choice, but I think that one run sends some, some warning signs to the others of what's to come. There's, uh, there's a lot of pace in this one vehicle in the race. Now on to Masa's map choice, I believe. The second map into the match. Hugo Dujour, copying Serrated's pronunciation here. Hugo Dujour is the second map. And both Granati and Masa picked this, so it's clear they've practiced it a lot and probably have some strategy that they're going for to make this map worthwhile for them. Both of them playing it when they're practicing together is not a coincidence, I don't think. So all eyes on Masa here to see if he can make it work. Ooh. Arthur and Coco risking those edges so precisely onto the pipes now. You can see how he's even jumping across some corners here and landing on the inside to keep stable. Here you want a tilt nose dive onto the platform, but he misses it. And it's Coco. In first, does he have the pace for the fast cycle? In between the cogs, has to go on the right side, that's a little slower. But the last jump decides through the ring, in between these bolts is where you need to aim. Slowing down enough, he has the lead, he's gonna take this first round. Coco, 10 points, ahead of Gwen and Carl Jr. And that is quite the field to beat if you're Coco. Also climbing back on the scoreboard a bit. He was in sixth, and Carl right now actually near the bottom as the players are struggling to even finish here. Need to perfectly release to get in between, and a little touch like that is going to send you off the ring. Chalik getting zero points. Otak might get zero points as well. So two players getting zero points. And that goes to show how hard the map pack really is. So nothing's over yet here until that last jump it requires very precise aim. Last round was Coco. Great start, great execution, and great last jump. And he's doing it again. One Neo slide followed by a full send to the right. Now we're seeing Gwen and Carl building a lot of pace across these pipes. Two tenths on everyone else. Gwen going out to the right side, though. Musa clipping. And Gwen has the speed advantage. He's going to probably be able to go to the left side here of this spinning cogwheel. Through here, getting a better setup for the boosters. And now he can aim all the way to the right, release appropriately, and he might make it. Oh, that's pretty wide, but it will work out for Gwen here. Oh, Carl! Carl with the snipe! Raining down from above, Carl Jr. Taking the round and 10 points himself. It is an ongoing conversation every time there's a tournament between these two. Who is going to win, Glenn or Carl? Glenn or Carl? That round was decided by just a tenth of a second. And look at the spacing. You can really get an appreciation for it in this internal camera point of view just how refined every move is. One slight movement out of place and you will crash, you will clip the corners. Well, I think Gwen even had a crash here. Masa with a dominant lead. Is he gonna be in time for this? He is, I believe, just barely, but he opts for right side and it's awkward and he might get caught up to now. 
on the last jump. Arthur is close, and they're going for the low jump. Carl and Arthur are both going for a very low jump through this, but Masa has that perfect angle. Oh, he doesn't! Oh, it's by a hair, and Arthur snipes it away. Arthur is right now on the scoreboard, getting up to a big lead. A player that I don't think a lot of people had on paper as one of the favorites, but look at this performance so far. 49 points now. Carl Jr. on 38, Gwen on 38. But so far, I think he's really impressed a lot of people. So we have the last round of Go to Jo. Oh, Masa with the worst start. Onto the pipes. Glenn again up first. Clean lines. Drop down. Glenn always going right side here. Was a crashing. Not getting the last chance to score points on his own map here. And has to play on other people's choices. Glenn risking that left side once again. And this is a fast run. If Glenn hits this last jump, it could beat the 50.4 world record on the map from Granati. It's very close. This might be. Oh, 50.7. It is still such a spectacular time. Another 10 points for Glenn. And Arthur Near here scoring fifth, scoring decently, but will maintain his first place in the match. So Glenn, they're only three tenths off of the world record. Protag getting points. Locked in and Massa as well, getting one point. Whew, quite the... <laughs> Quite the messy start to this tournament, but... <laughs> okay, okay, I'm with it. This is Serrator's night. He's put this tournament together for the past 10 years started in his own streaming room and eventually made it to the stages in 2016, his first on-stage performance. And now everyone's turning on their flashlights. <laughs> okay, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. I really want to let him enjoy his night. He's put so much effort into this for a love and a passion of the game and for making content and hosting big events. And you might not have heard of him if you're in the international Twitch scene, but yeah. And really, just carrying the torch for Twitch fonts. Here we go. Red Consil. This is a map with a couple of very tough speed checks. Picked by Coco. One of them is coming up right after this left-hander. Where the players need to hit a really precise drift to the right. And 160 speed through the checkpoint. Gwen might have it. And Coco definitely has it, I think. No, Gwen has to release. Oh, Coco even clipping. Only Arthur Carl, and one more player. Alfie made it. There's a fast cycle if you get all the way across. So big opportunity for Uffy now. Who's gone a bit under the radar, but he is currently fourth in the match, scoring decently every single time. Just no first places yet, but what about this? What about this last turn? No slide past the flags, and he makes it in just ahead of Arthur who again scored decently here. 61 points for Arthur already. Halfway to the 120 points he needs. But I don't know here, if Glenn hits that big jump, suddenly, I think you'll see him jump up into first. Same goes for, for Carl with a bit better of a jump. It's all in that middle part here. Once more, starting turns here, not too important. It's mostly in this fast cycle on the next jump. 
getting the Neo Slide to the left. You can get a better Rift setup to the right, so you can carry full speed left, push it. Glenn missing, having to respawn. Is Coco fast enough? He might barely be. Woo! Lands that jump together with a few others, low through the quarter pipe. Now you can see why he picked this. Feeling very comfortable here, Coco. Ooh. Not leaving a lot of space on the edge there. Drifting through, trying to land with a tilt. You can drift into this corner, out of the wobble, around the flag. Now the nose slide on the dirt. Carl is there, up he's there, but Coco fenced them off. Ten more points to him. Climbing up the scoreboard from that seventh place. Passing Otak, also going to pass Massa and get very close to uh, Afi and Gwen on the scoreboard as well. Still, Arthur has a strong lead here in first. 66. He has a 20 point gap down to fifth, staying in the top four. Ooh, Coco now making a mistake in the start. A little bit of a frown to the camera. What can Carl do here? Setting it up, trying in camera three, going for it. A big drift miss. Getting the laps from the casters. Carl does not have the fast cycle, instantly recognizes it. Uffy, Massa, and Chalik do. Coco does on a late cycle as well. Uffy trying to get a second 10 pointer here on this map. Through the triangle. Air break to get this drift set up. Massa not opting to air break, maybe cutting across. A little later for more speed. Off the clip, and Massa will take that 10 pointer away. And get on the board himself. That's why he goes for that wide line, but off his inside line could be better. I think he actually crashed a flagpole, costing him valuable time. An attack here. He's going to safely finish and get a point. Better than not completing at all. Finds himself at 43. Slowly but surely though, Afi and Carl bridging the gap a little bit. Coco actually also the world record holder on this map. Spotted on the scoreboard, 53-46. But I want to see Gwen get this rift set up right. The fourth and final round, will he have one fast cycle goes too fast once again. And you know, here's where the consistent play style really pays off. That jump is hard to get consistently, but Gwen finds himself pushing too much and his early dominance is not so clear on the scoreboard anymore. Uffy now passing Massa, one car like the head. Gets a little bit of a wobble, but less air time. Jumping through the triangle with a lot of speed. Bad drift set up here though, and will get passed by Arthur here. This is gonna be close. Three players in the mix onto those last no slides. Off no sliding early, but Arthur near clean angle. And 10 more points. 69 to 79 here. It's honestly insane how well he's doing. He must be feeling the pressure. These are titans of Trickmania Esports that he's playing against, but with the preparation he has, it doesn't seem to be much of an issue for him to fend them off. Can he keep this up though? How does he handle the nerves leading a match like this, knowing it's the biggest tournament prize pool there's ever been? Look at the little antsy we do have. One big cheer through the camera here from the crowd. <laughs> Standing ovation for something that I don't know, but I'm part of it. And it is amazing to be a part of this. Everyone's having a great time. I think except for the players. But right now, very nervous for the second half of the match. Let's get into it. Pizza map. This map is the final map that Serrator built this cup. He built two map packs, and then he decided to add one more map for the final. So there is not a lot of knowledge about pace on this map. But you have images of pizzas. 
starting out here. It's a bit of a longer map, with a big quarter pipe jump down to the landing zone. Everyone will be getting that. Now the bug slide around this corner, quite sharp. 360 into another bug slide to the right, and Chalik looks to have a good angle, as well as Arthanir. Again, Arthanir up near the first place. Arthanir respawning, though, instantly. Not seeing the angle, not finding it. Alfie with the speed slides down the hill, keeping his lead away from Chalik. Chalik pushing this corner, going for a shortcut. Different shortcuts here. Chalik might have a strategy here that not a lot of others do, at least not Alfie. But Alfie does have more speed. Flip up to this bridge. Landing on the right side, Afi is sniping through with so much speed and daring to push these corners. Charlie clipping a bit. Afi now up to about a second of a lead and Massa finding himself ahead of Charlie before the ending. Onto the pipe, not too fast now, don't want to fail here. Slow and steady and one flip into the finish ring. Afi, 10 points. The first round of pizza map. And maybe that shortcut miss was deliberate here from Afi. Thinking, you know what, that's a bit risky. I'm keeping more speed for the no for the next flip. Oh, attack, 15 seconds, should still be able to finish. Coco as well. Also, healthy signs from Arthur on this map. Good pace early. Missing a little bit. And very important eight points for Massa, who was near the bottom a couple of rounds ago. Found himself in seventh, now up in fourth. And only seven points from third. 82 points now for Arthur. 120 is the limit. That's what we're playing for. Got to reach 120 points and then win one round after that to secure your spot in the grand final. Wide setup for Uffy. But does get this. Arthur too much on the inside. Does not make it. Gwen has a good line. Chalk again with a good line. The flip up to this dirt ledge. Good for all top three. And now, from Afi's point of view, without this shortcut bounce, just going for the drifts. And it's not that much slower because he still has more exit speed for this upcoming flip. This is where he gains some time back. But again, it is Glad that we're seeing up first. He's found the flow of this. He is 1.4 seconds ahead before the ending. Zooming across, skipping corners, onto the inside of the pipe. Both turns, purse lips as he flies into the finish with a 106.2. And that is a world record as far as we know, with no publicly posted times. That's a new world record by Gwen, although it could be broken again in this match. Drove 0.7 faster than what Uffy did in the previous round. And he hadn't scored good points in a while. Those 10 matter a lot here for Gwen, one of the favorites to win the tournament. Afi scoring good as well, and Carl as well. Afi now up in the lead of the match. Now the quarter pipe jump. You'll see a lot of Trekmania players, whenever they go into a turn, they tilt their head left and right slightly, feeling the turns with every part of their body. The movements they have to make. Oh, what a beauty from Gwen, releasing as well to get this downhill. And now a nod of relief. He's going to have a massive lead after this. That is probably one second faster than anyone else could have had. And now a nice nose dive across the grass platform too. Arthur is close, but look at the lines from Gwen. Extending further ahead, it's now up to one full second. And a lower flip than Arthur. Arthur has to release, Arthur off the edge. And Massa reclaim second place, but Gwen, this pace is even faster. <laughs> He's two seconds ahead. This is so much faster. What's this final time gonna be? A 105.2. A 105.2. And yeah, you're getting the NTs in chat. Nice time. That probably very probably beats the personal best of some of the others. What an insane start from Gwen. And now he has momentum. That is one of the scariest combinations in, the, in this game. It's good pace with good momentum and good confidence. 
If he's feeling insecure about making the turns, he might crash, but right now, he is feeling really good about his chances. Has to go for a safer approach there, though, and Arthur will have first before the dirt flip, but very low for Arthur. Oh, what a pristine landing. Gets to the very top of the hill and can speed slide all the way down to get himself a half a second lead. But half a second against Gwen is not that much, especially before he's going to risk the ending here. Arthur probably just looking to score solid, but can Gwen find any time gains here? Carlin off here also in the mix, just waiting for a mistake. Gwen setting up the drift early, looking for more speed than Arthur here, skipping across the corner a little bit better. Up in first onto the pipe turn and setting that with so much more speed. And the overtake is successful. Gwen <laughs> snipes away the route and Carl even takes second place that round. Gwen found about 1.3 seconds against Arthur in the last half of the map. And it can really tell the ebb and the flow of the match. It comes and it goes. Gwen, when he's feeling good on a map, he is unstoppable. But the second he starts slipping up and making some mistakes and the pressure and the nerves start kicking in, overthinking his decisions and his, his past crashes, that's when the others have a good chance. But in a round like that, I dare say there is no player who can match Gwen's pace. Or even wants to try, because getting second place is so many points already. If you get second place driving one second slower than him, then you are pretty happy about that. But now, the ICE 360 map. I forget the name of it. We saw Heave pick it and almost make it work. La Saint Selon is the map. And it is a map with a lot of off-road parts, but especially this ending that you're gonna see in the cinematic. This ice slide into a skip across the snow is the decisive part. And then the climb up to the Ascension logo. Off he's still in the lead at 95 points. Carl at 92, Arthur at 91, and Gwen at 90. Before there is a huge gap on the scoreboard down to Massa with 73. These four players have been performing so spectacularly well. Now they're only lacking about 20 to 25 points to reach finalist status. Ooh, Carl a bit wide here. That did not look optimal, and he's not happy with that. Low speed up the hill, shaking his head. And now the skip in between the trees. Otak getting that perfectly, but Gwen has more speed, and Gwen into the ice slide might just snipe this away. Slowing down to get the uphill. Is it gonna be Gwen? Yes, it will, with another 10 points. I think that's his third in a row. 30 out of 30 in the last couple of rounds, and he will with that be just one point away from claiming first in the match. And what a round as well, Carl, with that one mistake. He's gonna be down in last place. Also, Gwen, was that another world? He's just beating another world record. <laughs> it's like not even fair. They're so used to it at this point. They're not even running nice time. They know. It's like, okay, Gwen, we get it. Chill, relax. 47.05, another world record from Gwen. And Otak getting second place, basically matching the world record times. That's just unheard of. Oh, but Gwen has a mistake here. And Afia has so much speed into the uphill. Great opportunity for him to defend his claim on first place so far. Ice 360 timing is there, but here comes Carl Jr. through with more speed. You have to slow down for this uphill and get the last little bit of speed to the finish. And I think Offie might snipe this away. Offie! Carl takes it by four thousandths of a second. Such a close race there. But Carl Jr. comes back from his mistake. The GOAT is not going down. Without a little bit of a fight. Off at 109, Carl 103 now. Gwen 102 and Arthur 94. Still the gap remains to those bottom four players right now. Masa, Coco, Otak, and Charlie kind of desperate for something to come back into this match because the other four have been playing so exceptionally well. And once again, a fast start here from Gwen. Already has somehow gained two tenths to Afi. Out of those starting turns, can he get the mountain jump right? 
This time it looks better a little bit out on the right side. Might have to adjust and correct. But such a close battle before this one ice spin to decide it. Who gets it best through the trees? It is, of course, Gwen going through clean. But Carl is there. He hits a bump a little bit, and that actually might have not even lost him time, but a spectacular run from Gwen, and it's another world record, 46.91. On Carl Jr.'s map choice, he's beating him by 0.2. Take a bow. Take a bow, everyone. Just this is our <laughs> fastest player we've ever seen on a stage. He might not be the best, most consistent player, but undoubtedly the fastest. I asked a lot of players coming into this tournament, which tournament would you rather win, World Cup or Ascension? Many players said the World Cup for the prestige, but Gwen said this one. Gwen said this is a once in a lifetime chance for him. This is the tournament he wants to win. And he has to lead into this round once again. 112 points, could hit finalist if he gets this 360 right through the trees. He hits a little bit and Otak passes him, but he only needs to score eight points and he will be in time for that, but he might even get the 10 as he challenges Otak for this first place and he will get another! Little bit of a smile, it's still enough for finalists. But of all places to crash, he crashes to the finish. Gets the good luck, he has it 120 exactly. And so now, one round win will take him to the final. The body language wise, looking quite comfortable. Carl, trying to get into the zone. In the back there. What map we're gonna have, Ascend CL. This is picked by Uffy. I don't remember Uffy's point total, but he is very close to finalist. And Uffy's map is gonna come through just at the right time. Had second seed and chose this as the sixth map in the series. Uffy's also finalist. It's a double finalist situation between Gwen and Uffy. Two previous teammates in past Raider Cups. Uffy with the best start. Oh, does Afi make the jump here? Oh, just on the left side. Into that quarter pipe. Trailing Carl Jr. by a little bit. There's been two mistakes. Arthur and Coco are out of the running. Gwen, it's actually only four players in this race. It's Otak, Afi, Carl, and Gwen. Two of them are finalists. Carl for the mistake. Otak versus the two finalists now. We might have someone going into the grand final after these bug slides are said and done. Otak, can he deny Afi here on the line? More speed but he needs a really low quarter pipe jump. Setting up slightly more on the left, needs to go all the way in and risk everything he can, he misses, and Afi goes to the grand final of Ascension. Not the name that a lot of people had predicted as the first person to qualify, but such a consistent performance from Afi. Went a bit under the radar in the start, but then he started scoring tens. And while Gwen had his pace, Afi shows here, it's not everything you need. You also need to score a lot of points every single round and then clutch your first final attempt here. Afi's in the finals. Carl hit finalist. And Otak is closing the gap to Arthur. That's gonna be a fight to take a look at for that fourth position. But for now, Carl versus Gwen for finalist. They both need to win one round to secure their spot. And they're both top two, but Gwen has so much more speed into the downhill. And this is gonna extend all the way to the island hops if Gwen plays this right. Carl had a really good downhill landing there though, but still in favor of Gwen. As the jumps come through, Carl jumps way too far and loses a lot of speed. Gwen extends here up to about three tenths of a lead before the bug slide, but also enters that with more speed. And now it's about half a second. Gwen, one jump away from joining Uffy in the grand finals of the biggest tournament in this game's history. And with a jump, a safe one at that, he will make it. And a fist bump and a sigh of relief. Gwen and Uffy are in the finals of Ascension. 
serious faces now from the rest. Also a scary fast time there. 50.4 is really good. I don't think it's quite the world record, but it is close. Now, what a start from Carl. Gwen has the world record for 49.95. Ooh, Masa hit the front a little bit. Coco as well, I think. High jump, but Carl, clear lead, 0.3 of a second. Controlled pace right now, 0.4, just needs to not get a bad downhill here. He bounces, and Otak will pass him. Does not get the right angle there, Carl. It's still not over yet. Things could happen, but Otak has a golden opportunity here. Could score 10, could outrun Arthur to the 120 mark, and maybe have one final attempt before Arthur gets there as well. Massa with a good last jump too, but Otak takes this round. 114 for him. Where does Arthur place? Arthur last year. And Arthur is going to end up at around 110, I believe. 113. 111 if he uh, gets the last jump here. Very close now. The top four do advance. 111 for Arthur, 114 for Otak. Still nothing's over yet. Carl with another chance at finalist. Up to the left. Does he have the angle? Jumps very far here, Carl. Has to go very high up to get the landing right, and that costs time. Arthur and Chalik have 0.3 of a gap now. But now Carl has nothing to lose. Now he can afford to push. I think the scenario suits him better. He was feeling the nerves in the other one, but now he's on the hunt. And he only has two targets left to catch into the bug slide with a sharper angle. There he goes one. Less B than Chalik, but can he find it in the last quarter pipe jump? Chalik here, who was first seed, who won the first qualifier when Carl had food poisoning. Now Carl wants to say he wants to show what he can do. Last jump, but Chalik holds the 4.7. 0, 0, 0.07 of a second. Chalik from last place, from the depths of defeat. So he still has something to play for. The next map is picked by Chalik. And maybe he can come back there. We'll go to that one as both players now are very close to finalists in that race for the fourth spot. We have uh, the names escape me right now as so many things are going on. Carl is finalist. Uh, Otak and Arthur are super close to getting finalists themselves. Only a few points away. This will decide the lineup. This will make or break dreams. Glasty Cut is perhaps the decider map in this match. A very obstacle heavy map with a lot of obstacle elements and a blind jump to the finish where you just need Really good feeling for where it's at. Very precise plastic parts as well. Starting with two, and three, and four Neo slides, and then across this bridge. And if you have enough speed, you can jump into the tunnel here directly. Carl cannot, has to slow down a little bit. Charlie upside down. He is out on his own map choice. Arthur with an exceptional start here, and the only player ahead of Carl of the plastic. Now a very sharp corner. Maneuvering past these edges and into the bobsleigh. There is a gap in this next bobsleigh part. You need to jump across and then go very high up on the wall and stay high up and wait for the exit, then dive down and carry the speed. And Carl Jr. has outmaneuvered out of near on this part. The last jump, Carl, he could go into the grand finals together with Alfie and Gwen, and he is in! The King of Trackmania is going all the distance to defend his title in the Grand Final. But Afi and Gwen did beat him in the semi. And that is a confidence boost going into the Grand Final. One spot remains. Otak and Arthur both hit finalists after that round. Otak missing the drift to in the start though a little bit. But gets the setup for that last kneel. Not a lot of speed for this, but might still make it into the tunnel directly. Catches the bug slide. Chalik has gotten a good start now, but so has Arthur here. 
they're all in the mix. Otax disappeared a bit from the frame. He's lost a second. Arthnir's up in first. Next to Massa. Massa only 11 points from finalist. Could deny Arthnir. Jumping across. Just about equal. They're one car right now in tandem. Arthnir missed here last time. This time, very low speed slides out a little bit for the pressure. But Massa has crashed. Where is Sean? Where's Otak? Otak crashes and Arthnir in the finals. Securing the last spot. There's no way it comes down to a round like that. A scrap battle. Otak can't believe he missed it. Musa can't believe he missed it. Arthur can't believe he hit it. And secured the final spot. But that is your lineup. Carl Jr., Afi, Gwen, and Arthur will join Grenadi, Glust, Binks, and Bren in the finals. That is our lineup. The top eight and Otag. Oh, it's heartbreaks. It is so close. It is one jump away. So much practice goes into that. And then one final jump where he could have had it. But that is the ups and downs. Still a spectacular match for Motak, still. You can tell it matters, he cares. Just did not go his way today, but with the competition he's up against as well, it's, it's honestly impressive to go all the way to that last jump. The level is just exceptional. A lot of people ask me, Virtual, why are you not playing? I would not even get to, uh, to, to the qualifiers. So it's a lot of respect for the players that got all the way here and that now are knocked out. Masa, Coco, Chalik, and Otak. Doing a standing ovation. Whew. This now means we have our grand final. This is the biggest Trackmania tournament of all time. $94,000 prize pool to the top three players. In this grand final, there's still going to be five players that go home with nothing extra except the biggest match that they've ever played. First place gets $66,000. Second place gets $18,000. Third place gets $9,000. The prices scale so heavily to the top. And uh, that is what it's about. Someone is going to win a ridiculous amount today. And uh, go into the Trekmania Hall of Fame as one of the top earning players of all time. You could have won 10 smaller tournaments before this. But if someone else beats you in this one, they could pass you in overall earnings. It's crazy. Here are some thoughts from the winners. It's incredible that you were not so often top at the beginning, that means that you started a little gently and then you got us on the 10 points. What happened? The map pack, you feel like you're on fire, you want to go shopping? 10 points. I'm super happy. I think it's one of the best matches of my career. And a match of fou, a regu of fou, it's a lot of fun and I'm very happy. I understand that. Well, it's hard to win. It's sure that it was a match incredible with names back to market Trackmania. It's really, it's really a thing. I really don't understand French, everybody. I'm so sorry. We'll see. We'll see. But it has its importance. How do we feel just before the final? Here, it's sure that when you finish first in this semi-final, you think it's the first place. The confidence is there. I'm going to try to play the same match for the semi-final, and we'll see what it gives. And the people are behind you. You have some supporters in the public. And the one who has also some supporters in the public is Gwen. Gwen, who has the most supporters in the public? Gwen, who has the most supporters in the public? Gwen, who has the most supporters in the public? Gwen, who has the most supporters in the public? A little bit of an applause there. I did not catch what Afi said. The confidence is here. I'll try to drive the same during the final. No, mais j'étais à moitié pas dedans, à moitié dedans. Je sortais un run sur quatre. Au début, c'était compliqué. Et puis, quand est arrivé pizza map, ce genre de map, bah forcément, bah c'est des bonnes maps quoi pour moi. When I got to the pizza map, I just became God himself. I understood that. When I got to the pizza map, I felt very confident. I became a deity. Did you have people in the public? So, can you give us your opinion as a professional player? Honestly, I didn't think so, but I think it's one of the best maps of the Cup. 
et honnêtement, euh, elle est incroyable. Et bah franchement, on remercie toutes les pizzas. Hein. Bravo, bravo Gwen, on se retrouvera en finale. Notre cher Carl, Carl comment... Euh... Bien évidemment, énormément de gens, énormément de soutien. Right here, Carl Carl, comment Jr. tu t'es senti On s'est fait un peu peur à la fin Ça va, je jouais bien, les Chalik m'a bien deny. Euh, je... En gros, j'ai pas commencé à mal jouer pendant mon finaliste. Si je commençais à mal jouer, là, j'aurais été stressé, mais je continuais à jouer, puis je me suis dit qu'une round allait passer finalement. Body language wise, finale, not the best match Carl could have played, but it's still enough to get to the final. And he wants to go all the way. Non, je suis là pour faire 8 e Non, bien sûr, bien sûr, bien sûr. <laughs> C'est bon, <laughs> laisse-moi faire mon storytelling, ouais, j'ai pas le droit. Non, 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 bien sûr, bien sûr, je te donne, non. Voilà, ouais, faut viser le titre maintenant. <laughs> je te déteste. <laughs> Et le dernier, Artanir, tu nous as fait, tu nous as fait vibrer de fou. Tu nous, fait, tu nous as fait un match incroyable, tu nous as fait un match qui nous a fait vibrer. Said, Au début, tu as roulé sur le match. Arthur, Ensuite, tu as fait un peu en train de se en plus que tu avais sélectionné. Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé sur Pizza Map J'étais trop fort en entraînement. Et puis quand j'ai commencé à la rouler en match, je me suis dit, elle est dure la map en fait. <rire> Mais ouais, après, j'étais super shaky tout le long du match. J'ai eu beaucoup de mal, même sur la fin, ça s'est vu comme je me suis qualif. Mais tu as réussi à te qualifier en plus avec une force mentale de fou parce que lorsqu'on voit les gens autour, lorsque tu as le public qui crie, lorsque tu as en plus des maps qui sont extrêmement so strong in training, but not I found it so much harder. Tu as été tellement fort que que la pression redescend et tout de suite ensuite elle va, elle va remonter. C'est quoi tes, tes sensations juste avant de jouer une finale Je sais pas, j'étais super stressé pour la demi. Super et je voulais vraiment voir pour la finale, c'était mon objectif. Je pense peut-être pouvoir prendre un podium. Et bah, Artanir, c'est tout le mal qu'on te souhaite. On espère que tu continueras à briller. En tout cas, tu nous as vraiment fait vibrer. C'était incroyable de te voir rouler. Et les gens euh, continueront à t'encourager dans le public. Something about only having Adrian, one objective. Euh, He's aiming for top three. Je pense que ce n'est pas la peine, mon cher Rayo. Et d'ailleurs, effectivement, ici, Japon Corp, qui a... The way this is now going to work, everybody. Pour le, pour We can kind of hop back here. The way this is now going to work is that they are going to play a match First to get finalist, same format, except when the first guy finishes his finals attempt, it's over. Whatever the points are, it's over. Like, that is the match. When the first guy closes it out, everything's over. And the tournament and the prizes are decided. There's no playing for second, there's no playing for third. The points you have when first place wins, GG. It's going to be very intense. There's going to be a quick break, I think, right after this. But uh, 15 minutes or so, and then we have the most anticipated, the most hyped final in this game's eSport history and in the history of the Asc uh, Ascension and Serrator Cups that he's done for 10 years. I'm gonna rest my voice a little bit, but then when I return and when the stream returns, we will have one banger match. I think Serrator has something else he's gonna say here. Uh, I, think, I think we're having to break. No, we're hoping to break. See you guys soon. Enjoy the music in a little bit, and I will see you guys very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And this time, it is for real. This time it is the grand finals. I just got sat down, I've just been talking to fans. It's awesome, there are so many nice people here in the Sud de France arena to watch this event. Several thousand spectators and so many nice people that have come up and said hi and said, you know, I, I play Trickmania because of you, I watch this game because of you, but um, it's very overwhelming. It's very overwhelming. Uh, and it's so much fun to be a part of and to be able to uh, provide provide content on this platform for people. I, I, I feel very appreciated. So thank you as well if you're watching online, not here in person, couldn't make it. I really appreciate it. Um, maybe one day I'll put on an event like this, you know, not this scale, but a Trackmania event as well. Serrator said this is his last one, but I think this is a tradition that needs to continue. So someone's got to carry the torch. And, uh, and if I have a platform to do it, so I'll, I'll see what I can cook up in the kitchen. But this is Serrator's night. This is his grand tournament. 
Let's celebrate what he's put together over a decade, a legacy. It's all coming down to this one final. The biggest one yet, the prize pool, the biggest one yet. The level, I'd say the highest it's ever been. It's simply spectacular. What's at stake going into this game is there are eight players. Three of them walk home with some of the biggest prizes we've ever had, and five walk home with nothing more than they came with, except maybe good memories of playing on such a stage. But it is $66,000 for first place. It is $18,000 for second place, and it is $10,000 for third. <laughs> Roughly speaking. It is quite crazy. They've all had to fight their way through a stacked semifinal to get here, but we have our eight players now. They are they are confirmed. Our eight players, and they are, and they're going to be shown on stage as well. Bren, Granati, Lust, and Binks, and then Uffy, Gwen, Carl Jr., and Arthur. Those are your eight. And just saying those names out loud and really like appreciating just how well they played in their individual matches, we are having an insane final. They've all, they've all essentially won their matches, but now it's the, the winners of the winners. That's what we're gonna compete for. If you had to make a prediction right now, who would you predict, chat? Mesdames et messieurs, pour le premier joueur à entrer sur cette scène, et je sais, que des gens dans la salle le connaissent et le soutiennent. Je vais vous demander de l'accueillir comme il se doit. Je vous demande d'accueillir... Bren For your introductions, Bren. The winner of the first... Mesdames et messieurs, le deuxième fait... Semi-final. Puisque c'est Gwen, tenant du titre. Il avait été couronné à Bercy. Il va arriver, hein. Il va arriver, hein. N'inquiétez pas, on va lui arriver fort. On va lui taper sur l'épaule en lui disant c'est à toi. Vous inquiétez pas. Euh, ça arrive. Attention, ça arrive fort. Il Parce est I là. Think they... <laughs> God, Gwen coming in through as number two. Oh, hey. Also just insane pace. That was what the conversations had were just about how fast Gwen were in the break. Banks coming through. Gwen's teammate in Gamers First, same org. Offy for Into the Breach. The winner of semi-final number two. He lost a bit of an underdog going in here, playing on the biggest stage. But such a good performance in that semi. Gives him a well-deserved spot on the stage. And now, Carl Jr. takes the stage. The greatest Trackmania player of all time in terms of winnings. Maybe someone can contest that label if they beat him here tonight. Granati on the steering wheel. And his trusty Granati shorts. Got those as a present from his girlfriend once and has been wearing them every map since. <laughs> a little cute side story. Arthur near onto the stage. Who also barely got that spot in the last round ahead of Otak in semifinal number two. Here we go. We are going to have picks and bands, and there was a surprise. I was not told to the players. But first, some comments. Extremely peur. I don't want to dérange tout le monde. On en reprend juste. Si 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 si. Tout le monde. Grenadier. One word. What? One word. Just to to express what you feel right now. One word. <laughs> oh, 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 o
<laughs> Amazing. Okay. Il est temps de braquer la banque. Okay, il, faut, il faut la braquer cette banque. Hein. Glass, il y a ta famille dans le public. Il y a des gens qui sont à fond pour toi. T'as la main sur le cœur. Les gens savent à quel point t'es fort. Comment on se sent oh, Je vais tout donner. Oh oui. Oh la, la concentration. Mon cher Afi, tu es à quelques secondes de jouer l'un des matchs les plus okay, incroyables de l'histoire de Trackmania. Comment on se sent On est là pour gagner. I'll give it all. Oh, oui. oh que oui Oh j'adore Oh que oui Putain j'adore ça Banks, tu as montré ta capacité mentale en te qualifiant en dernier, mais avec une I'm here to win off his ass. All right, these are some great quotes. Oh, oh, oui. oh ils sont précis. C'est bon. Gwen, plusieurs I'm personnes good. disent que c'est toi le nouveau goat de Trackmania. Est-ce que tu es prêt à le reproduire maintenant J'ai pas entendu. <laughs> oh, c'est énorme. Non, c'est énorme. Il a pas entendu. Il a pas entendu. Okay, Ma phrase est incroyable. Vas-y, on va Gwen, des gens te considèrent <rire> comme étant le nouveau goat de Trackmania. <rire> Est-ce que tu es prêt à reproduire et à prouver que c'est le cas Évidemment. Ah. ah Merci. Ça c'est bien fini. Merci, c'est merci. merci. I, I, I'm gonna become French so Bref. I can enfin... relate better. Bref, il y en a eu des moments dans ta carrière où euh, les compétitions de tort, il s'est passé des trucs de fou. Comment on se sent Est-ce que c'est est -ce est la run Est-ce que Bibi c'est la run C'est aujourd'hui Je crois que c'est aujourd'hui. Hein. Oh, oh, il croit que c'est aujourd'hui Oh, ça Et en même temps, comme je te disais, si on avait qu'une, c'est cool. maintenant. Si on avait qu'une, c'est maintenant. Il faut l'avoir maintenant. Oh, I don't really think we need to understand it. We can Alors, see the body language. On va garder we can see Afi, the confidence Bren, Gwen et Granady. Les autres, vous pouvez vous installer. Afi, Bren, Gwen, Granady, you stay here. Et on va leur demander players getting seated. Wow. Si les sont bons, hein. Et là, ils se demandent The pourquoi on doit rester là, ils savent très bien. Et on a le droit à le storytelling, non Et là, on va leur demander de choisir Have a surprise quatre maps. Here. Enfin, non, une map chacun, doucement quand même. Une map chacun, ainsi que... And to explain this... Ah non, pas l'ordre, c'est ça, hein. Oh, Excusez-moi, parce que c'est uh, tout nouveau me pour moi aussi. Hein. Guys. On va leur demander à chacun de choisir une map. Basically, et they en fonction de leur pick, signe, elle sera jouée en, dans le placement uh, qui entre 1 et 4. Maps parce right que now. les maps 5, 6, 7, 8, c'est nous qui avons choisi. Et on a the exact ruling. C'est nous qui avons choisi. Donc en gros, guys, you choose one map and position between one and four. Ok? That's it. Alors on commence par qui, mon cher so Michel? So they actually Régis, get to choose maps pre-ban. Par le site 1, si je ne me trompe pas. Before the ban. Ah non, on va commencer par Afi. Ok, my bad là-dessus. Donc Afi, ah c'est bien le site 1, je dis n'importe quoi. Afi, quelle map? There are no bans. Lanterne en deux. Lanteur dans deux, ce sera de l'esport. Et map 5, 6 et 7 sont choisis par le serrateur. Quelle map, quelle position euh, Je sais pas. Euh, J'ai envie de tenter Trialogo. Trialogo oh, oh le fou Alors quelle position entre 1 et 4 Gwen wants the trial. En une. En une. Ah Gwen pick the trial map oh, for the fou. finals. Oh le fou Eh ben d'accord He said he was Alors, hoping to get it through. And this is how. Bah, ils ont déjà pris les tuyaux. Trial into Lantern. Tu vois, regarde, tu l'as là-haut aussi. Alors, quelle map, quelle position Pyramid map. Pick the pyramid. Je vais prendre deux tuyaux 6. Quelle position En 3. En 3, donc deux tuyaux 6 pour Bray. Oh, he picks the pipe map. Ok, enfin, all fair. Granady, for which will be the fourth map Je vais prendre Marche Pair. Marche Pair. Oh, perfect, perfect. That perfect. is such a tough map okay, as well. Ok, Marche Pair en 4. So this is the advantage these four Merci players got from getting the top seeds into the final is they got to pick maps. Incroyable, mesdames et messieurs, nous avons notre chosen by the organization and now we will get to witness the match. Played on these four players first picks. Non, j'imagine qu'on qu'on les découvre après. Tu me dis And let me tell you. Let's maybe see the last couple picks here. Je sais pas. Bon, from the Raider and on les découvrira petit à petit, ok On verra. Alors, on va rappeler les règles de la finale, mesdames et messieurs. Oh wow, what a, what a le dernier match de Trackmania. Start Donc, to the finals règles, on trial logo. Coup, That is such 18, a difficult map. 18, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 120 points pour devenir finaliste. And then Lantern, the new slide map. Sachant que le top 1 remporte la sanction. Et on ne jouera pas la deuxième et troisième place. C'est un très difficile map qui favorise le steering wheel. C'est pourquoi Granady veut ça. Donc le classement se fera comme ça. Dès que quelqu'un arrive premier en statut de drapeau, pouf, map ça s'arrête, il a gagné. Leading Bravo four à was tous, c'est énorme. Et d'ailleurs, on va vous rappeler pourquoi on joue quand même. On parle du cash prize, on parle d'un match très important. To on va the vous parler de ce cash prize to the very top. qui va être scellé ce soir, mesdames et messieurs. Here is once again the cash prize distribution, the biggest prize possible tournament. Here is once again the cash prize distribution, the biggest possible tournament. 
that we've ever had. $128,000 was raised. 15% of it was in the first qualifier. You can see the pricing. The second one was the Revenge. This is the one where Grenadi won just ahead of Afi. My camera is blocking him a bit. But here, the finals. 62,000 euros to first place. That is $66,000. About $18,000 for second and $9,000 for third. An insane amount of money. And the biggest we've ever had in a Shukmania tournament. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, get nothing. It's all about being the best. And everyone knows it going in. Everyone's going to risk for the top spots here. Fourth gets nothing. <laughs> so the tensity is going to be very high. I think we are just about to get started. I think, Chad, if you heard that, I think we might be getting some translations, which is awesome. The pyramid map was never seen, but that's okay. We will still have world-class Trek Mania with so many spectators watching and cheering on with the best players on stage and with the biggest prize pool. This is everything this game deserves. And if you like it, you should share it with your friends, tell them it's happening so that more events like this take place. That's the one thing sponsors look at at the end of the day is interest from, from people. And so let's make this final a memorable one. As we go into it. You can now vote in the chat for your favorite player. If I had to predict this final myself and I'm going to make a brave attempt at picking just one of these eight players, I would say Gwen. I would say Gwen. I said it before the tournament started and I'm going to stay with my prediction. I'm not gonna change my prediction last minute. I am saying that Gwen is probably going to take this. You've got Serrator and Etoile saying Carl Jr., TV Beta saying Bren, and Trillix is saying Granati. But it all depends on how often he gets those runs. And I'm going to stay with my prediction. I'm not going to change my prediction last minute. I am... We are moments away. You can see in the corner there, the match admin getting everyone set up on the server. The warm up has begun. I'm hearing the music, I'm hearing the hype, I'm hearing the crowd rile up a little bit. I think. This is the start of what could be something legendary, something we could talk about for years and years. How this one match of Trackmania unfolded. French classic here, the wave, the mascot, and the wave. Sending some shock waves up the stance. Cheer if you're rooting for. 
Arthur Nier qui est en train de les outsiders, enfin, ouais. pas les outsiders, mais les gens qui, qui peuvent créer de la, de la performance comme ça, ça peut évidemment faire parler et ça fait toujours plaisir. Alors on va bientôt commencer cette finale, vous inquiétez pas, hein. Moi, ça, va, dis... ça va démarrer. Moi je te dis qu'il faut faire attention au facteur Banks. Facteur Banks Il est trop... Tu sais, c'est... Tu vois, pour banks. ceux qui regardent le basket, ouais. moi c'est un mec, lorsqu'il reste deux secondes au timer, il tire, <rire> il tire sur le... Pour faire le trois points du bout du terrain, il tire. Ok. Et vraiment, depuis le début de l'ascension, c'est vraiment un joueur... Euh... Tu sais, à chaque fois, il passe un peu sur le film, oh mais boy, il est ça... toujours là. Il est toujours I am... Il fait très très bon. I am ready. Et, euh... I am ready as can be. I'm... De... Voir une, une finale totalement... We can keep, we can keep, like... Oula, the tea's pas. going. Non, mais pas les 8. Do all these moi, activities. Pour moi, ça va être une finale gardant US en termes de niveau et en termes de série. Pour moi, ça imagine, I am imagine ready la Riot Malédiction to, uh, et, et c'est 120 alors que le deuxième il a 80. Sacrifice my voice in this last game. Tu sais que c'est possible, hein. je me souviens d'un G2 FPX. Non mais c'est toutes les finales, hein. c'est quasiment toutes les finales Riot. Mais ça va pas être le cas. Peut-être pas, on verra. C'est vrai qu'il y, y a des choses à faire. Il y a des choses à au faire. Pire, au pire, on change et on met un 500 points. <rire> au pire, il euh, y a le temps, il y a le temps. Il y a le temps. Ouais, non, mais non, il est, il est tard quand même, hein, franchement. Euh, alors, il y a cette coupe, hein, cette coupe incroyable. Alors, cette coupe qui, euh, qui be some extra la montagne, the world with elle est descendue du ciel en plus, vraiment, avec wheel. des cordages. Alors, je vous cache pas, c'était... Euh, on a hésité, hein, on a hésité à faire ça, on s'est dit si elle tombe et tout. Alors, alors qu'il continue le being that guy ça, has to be a lot of fun. Est-ce qu'il se fatigue un jour, lui Trop fort, oh, ça va, on est en début de soirée, là. I don't know if you've seen that meme, like, what gives people feelings of power, and it's like... Money, love, and then being a mascot and being able to make people make noise. It is Luffy, the Carmine Corp mascot. Like I would love that. J'ai l'impression que de ce côté, j'ai l'impression que le virage est crie plus fort. Alors vraiment, mais regarde. Oh là, il se. Look, this guy's having a great time. Oh là là, quand il va pouvoir, quand il va pouvoir faire ça au World de League of Legends. Round of applause. Le virage est est très très présent. Non, pas vraiment. Hein. Très, 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 très on en est où en régie là Nous on peut rester là. Euh, oh, nous c'est notre métier. Hein. C'est une heure hein, si tu veux. Moi, moi là je te fais. Je te fais... Ah on est prêt on est Ah bah go bah, cool, bah cool, alors Nous on est là pour ça. T'as vu, vu les manettes là On peut enlever les trucs et tout. Ouais, c'est incroyable ça. Hein. Peux voir le Deep ça, breaths regarde, everybody. Regarde, Still time to tell your friends what's happening. <laughs> They've never watched Drake Mania match before. This could be their first. Trial logo is going to be the first map. Let me run you through the format and the players that we have in the final before it begins. This is a long map, so give us a little bit of time. This is the finals of Ascension, the biggest prize pool tournament that we've ever had. The players are on the server and they're already starting the first round on the map picked by Gwen. Gwen picked this because it is the hardest map and he wants to throw the others off with a lot of difficulty. There's so many strats here. Arthur here going for a safe early landing. Some players skipping across further, but Glenn there, up ahead, just respawned. He made a mistake and had to go back to the start. Checkpoint is here, and four players will be getting it. Glust, Renati, Afi, and Carl. And then, how about the other players in the final as well? Bren, Binks, Glenn, and Arthanir are also there. Now they go down onto a railing, and drop onto a third railing. And the entire point here is for this to be very, very difficult. It is not built to be very smooth. It's simply built to make the world's best track mania players have some obstacles to contend with. But in this first round, it is Uffy and Glust with the best starts, both getting the shortcut across this Ascension logo. They're driving on the end right now, going to the S. And now you got to slide across and go all the way on this outside pipe around the logo before they're heading for a big quarter pipe jump. But real quick, the format in the finals is the following. You score points based on your positions. If you get first, you get 10 points. Second, eight, third, you get six, five, four, three, two, one, and so forth, and so on. You need to score 120 points to win the finals. And then when you hit 120 points, you have to win one more round to actually seal the deal. Doing that will net you $66,000 and off the That just means that jumps like this matters all the more than before. Will Carl make it? He's very slow with a backflip. Just barely he makes it. Granati winning this first round though, ahead of Glust and Carl Jr. And usually in finalist mode, 
after the first player wins, they will play for second place, play for third place. This time, when the first player gets to 120 and wins this round, the match ends at that point. And the points are counted, whoever is second will get $18,000, whoever's third get $9,000. I hope this all makes sense. But surprisingly, it is Gwen who picked this map first pick, who is last in this first round, and he might not make it! Oh! <laughs> Zero points for Gwen in this first round. But still plenty of chances. They play four rounds per map. Now let's see what Gwen can cook up, cook up here in the kitchen in the second one. It looks like there's just one card on the track, but that is because everyone presses forward here in the beginning. So it gives them this landing, and now they're on their own. Now they have to drive cleanly and avoid mistakes. Into the checkpoint, all eight have survived so far. There is a bug slide you could do here. Glad, whoa, trying it. One of the only people going for it. This bug slide landing on the logo saves only a second. But already, this is the exact type of start to this match that Gwen would not want. Getting thrown off a little bit, picking his map and then not finding the flow. Surprisingly low, he's still within contention. He's not far enough behind that the others can be safe at all. He's climbed his way back up to second place despite respawning and Bren missing this pipe entry. Very unfortunate. Gwen now is contesting off for first place, already catching all the way back up. Trailing a little bit as they go into the pipe here. Oh, hits the pillar. Lust passing him. Onto the pipe. Small bugs like to set him up. Still chances in the ending here. All four entering the double rail right about the same time. Now you want to get onto the pipe and then hold two wheels on. Build speed for the quarter pipe jump and needs to go very far to the left. Off he has it. I think Lust has it as well. If you release this jump, you're not going to make the shortcut to the finish. Ross going very far. Offy looks like he has it clean. Gwen looks like he has it clean too in second place. Oh, Offy clipped. Gwen is going to win the round. And Glust in second. Very impressive. Offy not having to respawn there though. Does turtle to the finish, I believe. So Afi not opting for enough speed to make the jump, but wow. What a start to this match for Gwen. It's very up and down despite respawning. He finds the 10 pointer and a good time as well, despite the mistake. Carl Jr. consistently up there with two third places in a row, 12 points for him. But it's actually Granati with 13 in second and Glust in first with two second places. Uh, who's now gonna be first with 16 points, sorry. There we have it. Updated scoreboard and a bit of a rough start for Banks and Arthur But this is a map that a lot of players would opt to ban uh, if they could, and they did in the semis. But here now, they cannot ban it. And uh, they have to face Gwen on it as he wanted to play it. Let's see if Gwen. Oh, he's actually respawned once more before this first checkpoint. And that is a respawn he can't really get away with. That is a big time loss. Offi and Granati have also suffered similar time losses in the beginning here. Not hitting that first checkpoint yet. Several seconds behind Binks into the wall, having to back up and then go onto the rail. Quite familiar with it. This is a mistake you see sometimes. Most important thing is that you make steady progress on this map. That you don't get stuck. Oh, almost get stuck in the ring there. Who is even first? It's Carl Jr. or was. Now it's Bren versus Glust. And Glust has actually found Really consistent pace on this. It's the third time he's up there in the mix for first place. But Bren is not going to fall off the pipe again, I don't think. The first one can be attributed to nerves, but here you can see him driving these very safely. Has his origins in the style of trials and RPG tracks. Obstacle maps for Bren, but oh, a little bit stuck. Does get through now though, passing Arthur just barely. Glust with a 1.5 second lead. Clipping a little bit as he approaches the jump and has a bit of a grimace. Same for Bren. Not too happy with their approaches. What about Arthur Does Glust land this jump into the quarter pipe? It looks good, but oh no, the landing's bad. He possibly does not have the speed. Just actually. Oh no, 
he falls off the side and onto your face plan. It's Brennan first, and how much is this going to cost? Lost, he misses again. Carl Jr. has third, but I think Lost can get fourth here and survive despite, despite the mistake that was only five points lost in potential value. Must be very high up in the sky right now, looking to land the quarter pipe himself. Binks taking the safe path. There's only 320 there for Afi, but just enough to make it. And he will clock in in last there. 34 seconds behind. It's a rough map. Gwen has not gotten too cleanly through it. In two of the three rounds, the fourth and final round here will be very important for him. Else he might have been better off picking the pizza map. He holds the world record with a 140, Gwen. Ooh, Afi's missed the press forward. Something you see some controller players struggling a little bit with as uh, the controller can just steer ever so slightly a few percentage points. And that means that you will not be going in a straight line anymore and getting the same outcome. Now Gwen for the bug slide. He loves to go for this strat. He's the only player doing it. And he just gained a three second with that. Now trying to slow down on this edge and set up for this double rail immediately. And okay, watch out. He is pacing right now. He is gonna be, I think, around three to four seconds ahead. It is very hard to keep up with this unless Carl can do it. Gwen has a safe shot for that. Oh, Carl is actually keeping up both of them on such good pace. Everyone else is left in the dust in this race. Oh, Carl missed! Gwen has almost a 10 second lead at this point after hitting all those fast strats and wow, even risking here. He does know this on the checkpoint splits now. There is no need to risk, but it doesn't look like he's planning on slowing down. It does not look like he's planning on breaking his rhythm. Sometimes it's easier to drive a map like you're used to instead of playing it too awfully safe. But it was such a close battle for that second place. Does Gwen hit the timing? Does look good for this quarter pipe. Shakes his head, mid-jump, not happy with the airtime, I think. Despite being seven seconds ahead of second place and landing the ramp perfectly. The Trekmania player in him is saying it could have been better. But it's 10 more points for Gwen. Lust also, spectacular performance here. Will be first place at the end of this map, Lust. So uh, he can be happy that Gwen picked this. Gwen should be getting quite close to third place in this match now overall. But for Biggs, this has been a rough map. He's going to have to look forward to the next one instead. Not really a good map for him here, Biggs, and he knows it. But the frustration is very visible. It's only points, or sorry, only prizes for top three here, so do not really want to play in for a safe top four, top five. You have to get those big point multipliers, 10 points, eight points. So maybe on the next map he can make more happen. Now we're gonna have the second map and this was Lantern picked by Afi. Afi chose this map. It's a really interesting map to me as a Trickmania player. It looks flat and boring in comparison to some of the other things we've seen. Does not have any fancy quarter pipe jumps. Does not have any fancy loops or anything. This is just perfect racing. There are so many tight drifts you can do in this map and they do a technique called Neo sliding. At low speeds in Trackmania, at under 180 speed, or when you don't have the time to set up a new drift uh, regularly, players do what's known as a Neo slide. You tap steering once, and then you tap brake, and then hold steering. Arthur missed this Neo slide into the wall. But if you look at the wheels, they will wobble a bit before each turn. It's like bump, bump, two taps. And if you can do these consistently, you can get a really good time on this map, crawl Jr. into the wall previously a world champion on the tech style and that was what they played the only style they played at that time but now adding some elements like dirt here does make it quite interesting Uffy is nearly first place on his own map choice but Gwen is up there as well two of them have a two to three tenth lead against every other player before these last slides and a very instructive moment here if you're learning track mania they drift to the left here to set up a better right drift for this final slalom and Uffy holds on for first place by a tenth of a second. 
beautiful times. Anything at 56 low to 55 high is a spectacular on this map, and they both score really good points here. 55.4 is the world record though. Second round coming through now, and it's a balancing act. How much do you want to risk? If you drive safely and you don't do these risky neo slides close to the walls, you're not going to score a lot of points. But if you crash one early into the round, you're not going to have any fighting chance like Gwen there. Crashing into one of the earliest drifts, and Uffie so clean in these first couple of corners. Really just using the space given to him on the track to perfection, but here's Binks as well. He scored a couple of points that last round, and now he's back here. Shows how much the map will place apart. All three of them just about equal into the dirt, where they're aiming for the outside dirt line, staying high on this edge and carrying the speed. Carl Jr. getting it just about perfectly. Now leading against Offy with a tenth before the final two corners. Banks carrying a lot of speed here in third place, but crashes out and Grinaldi takes that place. Who's going to win this round though? Is it Offy or Carl? Offy with the best approach. Offy outmaneuvering Carl by a tenth and taking a 55 and 10 more points for himself. 20 out of 20 possible points right now on his own map choice. And a lot of players, despite this map looking simple, actually choose to ban this map simply because the gaps are so marginal and if you can't neo slide that well, you're gonna not score that much. But Offy here, he's in his domain right now. He's in his element. Look at these drifts. Knows perfectly how much he can afford to go between the walls. And I do not think we will see him crash here. He is feeling very confident. And this goes so much along the Offy playstyle that we see in Trackmania Grand League. He had maps there where Agility Dash, for example, where he just would not crash. Same for the map called Back and Forth, dominating those maps, and that's how he and his teammate won the regular season. Grand League, but now, Gwen has found more pace than him into the outside line. Carl Jr. is up there as well. This battle is far from over as they have more speed. Two turns remain, the first one here, followed by the drift to the left, and then that tiny slalom hairpin. Gwen still with the car length. Uffy though pushing a lot, but Gwen holds on and takes the 10 points this time. It is eight for Uffy and it is six for Carl Jr. Granati keeping up as well, has to be said. Granati plays this on keyboard rather than the steering wheel as it lets him kneel slide more frequently. Kneel sliding on the steering wheel is almost impossible. And so he's doing really well for playing on a secondary device. But look at the scores. 44, 44, 43, and 39, 38 is so close between these top five players. Only Brent, Arthur, and Binks have not gotten off to a great start on the scoreboard yet. Oh, Brent missing the new slide here as well. Not really getting through. And now we're seeing in the face cam, Offy and Gwen side by side. Gwen with the inside line here, such a good approach, but Offy maybe having the upper hand before the dirt. Oh, beautiful apex as well there, side by side. On to the outside, Offy hitting that way better, and look at that! Gwen missed one outside turn, and he got passed by five players, that's how close it is. Carl Jr. now getting closer to first place, glossed in there as well. Into the last two corners, the hairpin turn, drifting for the setup, Carl Jr. Beautiful maneuvering, and he takes it! No, he does not! Really looked like Carl was ahead, but Offy scoring 38 out of 40 points on his map choice. And with that, he will climb all the way up into first place in the match. Although by only one point, still making almost max value out of that pick of Lantern. Coming into the final as the winner of the semi-final and using that advantage of having the ability to pick a map, choosing his best, 30 out of 40. You can't really complain about that. And it's looking very solid now. This next map though, is not picked by Gwen, it's picked by Bren, but you should pay attention to Gwen on this. Gwen set the world record on this map earlier today, a 57.7. .7. With the risky ending strategy here, where you see instead of going straight, they go onto the pipe on the left to carry even more speed. Exceptionally risky stuff, but he had the speed to do it once. Can he pull it off in the final? We already had a mistake on the left. A little bit of time lost from Offy, I believe. Paul Jr. getting a beautiful dirt turn. The others pushing, the pipe turns more. Oh, Granati almost sliding off, Glust into first. On the downhill now. 
Slowing down a lot. Glenn getting a bad bounce, and Brandon Glust gaining even more time. Glust getting a beautiful exit there as well, and he's looking for a 10-pointer here. Had beautiful chances on the trial map, and this is quite similar in style, but Brandon so much speed through the logo. Also barely makes it under that ledge now. Only about two times up to first place. Does get a better bounce than Gloss. More speed onto the pipe. Will go for the straight line. Does he get a backflip here? Has to hold for good bounces to the finish. Oh, he makes it. Gloss in second, Granati third. Very close battle there. And pay attention to the times. That was a 59-49. Gwen earlier today in the semifinals dropped a 57-7. How, you might ask? I have no idea. It is unheard of, the pace that Gwen has on paper, but it's also so up and down, whether he can deliver it or whether he crashes and makes a mistake. He's a loose cannon, glass cannon built for Gwen. We see more consistency from others here. Outside crash from Bren, not the most ideal. Carl once again with a good dirt start, and here, Gwen is rushing that pipe. Making a breakaway from the rest of the field. Onto the down, slowing down here. Carl with an awkward bump. Controlling it though. Now Gwen versus Granati. Gwen with more speed. A little bit less airtime for Granati. He's gonna help him stabilize. Has to push this corner to catch up to Gwen. And he is not going to get much closer as Gwen does it at full speed. Glust as well. Up in first and second. The last pipe for Gwen. Does he make it across here? A lot of nerves. Goes for the risky and misses it. Oh, and that's a slow bounce. He might not make it to the finish that easily. It's going to be Brad winning the round ahead of Lust. And Gwen dropped all the way to fifth. He was trying to do this left side pipe in the ending, but he pays the price. And really good points for Brad on his map choice to level the scoreboard even further. Arthur in last as well, scoring decent points to bring him closer too. Also seeing on the scoreboard now that the, the time for Gwen is indeed not actually the world record, but there is one more skip that they're fighting too inconsistent for rounds, which is the time difference. And that'll be skipping across this pipe here and landing on the other one. If you incorporate that and the risky ending, then you end up with a time around 56-6, but already the times they're driving are really fast here. Bren with another good start. Ooh, and we see someone stalling the car a little bit. Not what you want to get. I think that was Binks. Glenn in first. Bren very close. Is he going to dare in this last round of this map to go for that risky jump onto the pipe? Bren has a lot of speed. He might do it. He slows down to go on the safe side. Hits the wall a little bit, but Gwen does not. Granati is the one who gets the last lap, has the most exit speed onto that red platform, and the speed slides to follow and take the 10 points. The table turned several times there, but good points for them all. Actually, one more round here to be played as Offie now and Gwen and Carl have crossed over 60 points. That means they're halfway to the point limit. Want to reiterate here, 120 points is what they play towards. Once you reach 120 points, you then have to win one more round to win this tournament and the $66,000 prize. Absolutely mental to think about and the players just have to take this one round at a time. Bren, another fast start, another excellent use of this map pick. If he makes it through, he first picked it in the semifinal. He picked it when he could here in the grand final. Now has a chance to prove its worth, and he falls off the pipe. Very unfortunate for Bren, who was climbing all the way back from the last couple spots there. Offie versus Gwen on the last jump now. Gwen with the best speed by far. Not gonna go for the left side. Is gonna try to go for a straight jump, but he hits the flag. Plus turtling, Carl might snipe it away, and he does by a tenth of a second. And Gwen and Brett falling all the way down here to seventh and eighth. Despite really fast starts that round, the consistency is what's missing for these two, especially for Gwen right now. Such fast runs, but also 
many more crashes than the likes of Carl, the likes of Uffy. And now we're going to Granati's map choice here. The fourth and final map that was picked. Yes, we have uh, Etoiles calling something here to the crowd. Not quite sure what, but pay attention to Granati with the steering wheel. This is a map that favors very smooth movements and preventing the car from sliding. And that is why Granati might be the favorite to take um, a lot of points here. We also have this bug slide through the checkpoints and then a lot of precise dirt parts. Starts out with a big shortcut when we get there. So we're loading in. Um, might just need a quick map restart here. This is not the map Granati picked, so we will go back there. All is good. Oh yeah. Just uh, just giving the players a couple minutes here while they fix that. But yeah, wow. What a start to this finals. Nothing is decided yet. You still have five to six players within 10 points of one another halfway to that finalist mark. You, I cannot pick a winner just from this start, but Carl Jr. is climbing that mountain in that poster. And thinking about the amount of tournaments he has won in this fashion, where he always gets an edge on everyone else, always finds a way, despite it seeming impossible. Several World Cup wins, several Trickmania Grand League wins. Carl Jr., this could be his big night once again to truly cement his legacy in this game as the greatest of all time. There's no dispute he is right now, but if he wins this tournament as well, there's gonna be a long time until someone can say they've done more than what he has. In one more tournament. Currently he's sitting at five World Championship titles, if not six, I've lost count at this point. Five Serrator Cup wins, if not six. And maybe an Ascension win by the end of the night. Could be someone's big day today. What if you take home the top prize? What if even you take home the second prize? That is $18,000. That is more than you get for winning several seasons of our top league, Trackmania Grand League. It is unheard of for these players, and that's why you see these intense, concentrated, slightly nervous players on stage right now. Because it means so much to each and every one of them. And something quite beautiful is happening as well in the in the hall while we're waiting. The crowd has gotten out their phones. You might see that panned. Small lanterns. Here we go. Back into focus. A big shortcut down to the first checkpoint. And now you need to turn around and drop into the hole, into this checkpoint as well. You need to carry the gear to get there. Carl Jr. with an awkward landing. Did Granati make it? Yes, he did, but at a half a second, Lost to some others, now in between the market. This is where the steering wheel is really, really good. And out of this section, Granati has actually made a mistake, so it's Bren up in first, bug sliding through that checkpoint as well. Quite risky line, and Arthur near. It's gonna catch up if Bren does not get it perfect. Another good bug slide for Arthur near. Onto the dirt now. Some no slides to go before the finish. Can Arthur near find 18 hundredths of a second in these last long corners? There's also a slightly risky jump to the finish where Braden could mess up, but he should make it through and he does. Braden winning this first round on Marsha Pair. And we do not have the points there on the left, but I believe they are counted by the admins already and will be updated after this. So uh, let's hope that's the case. Gloss here, clocking in in last. Now let's see the, uh, the standings as they are, hopefully. All back to normal. Let's see it. There we have it. Offy's in the lead now. 78. Carl on 77. Glust on 70. And Granati on 68. They hit the wall, turn around, get the second gear, and then drop into this checkpoint next to the finish. And then they pick up the finish. From the lower checkpoints, Arthur near missing the slide. Granati as well. Missing on his own map choice here. 
And it's Glenn with a massive lead. How did he gain a second on everyone else? Not doing the super risky triangle strategy here, but still so far ahead of everyone. Afi with a lot of speed though, despite that. Bug sliding through the checkpoint. Onto the outside line here. Still Glenn and Afi could score decent points to keep him further ahead of Carl here. As Carl is quite far down the scoreboard. Lost with a good no slide to push for second place. Brad pushing for third. Oh, too high. Brad. Woo. Gets sixth place. Could have been a lot worse. But Glenn scoring a 10 there. Off of getting six. Gloss getting eight. Still going to be Uffy in the lead. Carl in second. And Gloss and Glenn tied basically for third and fourth. Only pricing for the top three. Cannot stress this enough. Oh, Gwen missing the speed. Bre Gwen cannot go for the shortcut. Brent cannot either. Huge opportunity now for Granati. Needs to seize this moment as some of the top players have failed. And he has an excellent start. Going around the holes now. Getting the booster here. Going outside pillar to get a better setup with more speed towards this checkpoint. Dropping down. Bug sliding around the checkpoint rather than going in the triangle like Lust. And carrying more speed on the dirt. Early setup here for Afi to get this type of line, but Granati should still have the speed to defend this, especially with the steering wheel, the best device you could have in this terrain. Afi's gonna try what he can, but Granati will perhaps find a round on his own map that he chose, his best map in the map pack. 51-6 for him and 10 points, putting him at 80, but Afi's still scoring so well here. 92 points total, Carl Jr. at 86 and glossed at 84, closer and closer to 120. And it's looking a little bleak now for Arthur and Banks. They still have everything to play for, but they're also running out of time. They need to mount a comeback soon if they want to be in the mix. So the battle seems to be between the top six players right now for those prizes. Glenn getting the shortcut it looked like, having the speed, but a bit of an awkward landing. Granati up in first by quite a lot. Onto this road clip, have to react in a moment. Notice to how your car adjusts Carl off the ledge, misjudges his car spacing, and now Gwen versus Granati is the battle to take a look at in first and second. Both of them going through Carl upside down once more. Granati about a tenth ahead before the bug slide, the bug slide opposite directions. Gwen staying on the sand a bit longer, and Granati now having more speed. There's also Glust on the outside line there, catching up quite tremendously to Gwen. Challenging him now through this section. The last no slide through. Are they going to hit the release timing perfectly under the ring? Granati winning the round ahead of Lust. And Gwen in third place. In the last round of Marsha Pair. Granati still getting decent value out of it with two 10 pointers back to back, but that could have gone a lot better in the early rounds as well. He's still going to be at 90. Off he had a bit of weak round there. I think the most of the top players are going to centralize around 90 points here as we now go on to the maps picked by the Ascension organization. We do not know what's coming up here. These are Serrator decided, essentially. Let's see what we have. Ooh, and I can already tell by the name here. Spoiler alert. Numport. New import. I, I, my French, I'm, I apologize. The tire map is the next one up. And this one has broken so many dreams in this tournament already. The last jump here is so precise. And then you add all the nerves, and then you add the biggest cash prize there's ever been in a Trackmania final. It's got to be nearly impossible to hit this jump, but if they manage, and to those who manage, they could gain big time here. Especially this right here, through that tire at the end of the map, is what we are taking a look at. Off field 93 has led the match the entire way. Gloss on 92, Granati on 90, Carl Jr. on 88, and Gwen on 85. Then a 10 point gap down to Brand. Let's take a look at the race as it unfolds. Gwen trying to land in an ice slide here. Hits mostly ice and not so much snow, so he will maintain first place, but now a very important ice slide where he hits a lot of snow and will be quite slow. Carl hitting the roof will get a little bit of that downhill, but it's not great. Binks is the guy 
with the most speed out of it. He has to lead before this ending. Bren has had several good runs on this map up to this point, but then the last jump has not been that consistent for him. You gotta be quite far on the right side on this grass turn, slow down a little bit and then aim for the part in between the spokes and go all the way to the downhill. Gloss gets it, Binks gets it, and Bren under all the pressure, they all get it. And it's a fantastic round for this map, but it's Binks that gets 10 from last place. He could maybe climb a little higher and now to come back, but it's looking far. Glust now in the lead of the match against all these titans in Trekmania Esports. You have Uffy, you have Granada, you have Carl, you have Glenn, you have world champions in this lobby, and yet it's Glust leading the match at 98, but the pressure is there in the no slide. Is not, he slides off the platform, down into last. So much at stake here. Through the Ascension logo, there's a one roof, it. that is Gwen, losing a lot of speed across. Bren, Carl, and Binks now tied up before the decisive ending jump. They all got it good last time. Carl with an opportunity now, as some of the other top players have failed. Carl gets first here. Then he could also claim first in the overall score, and Bren does have a bounce there. Does Carl hit the aim? Bren gets it at the very least, and Carl is able to stabilize and get into first place. How much is this going to do in the scoreboard? Glenn is there in third, off the fourth, Granati fifth, but for Kloss, this is very unfortunate. Last place here in this round. Carl's going to be at 99, off at 101. Granati at 98 and Glust at 99. This is absolutely absurd. It's so close. Look at the points. 120 is the limit and then one round win is what you need to end the entire tournament, to claim the top prize. Gwen missing the line there, clipping a bit on the inside. Glust has gotten a good start now. Bren letting the nose dive a little bit, but Binks consistently finds himself near the front here. But Glust is there now. And if he had a big opportunity earlier, this is one that he cannot squander. This is for the tournament. Fighting yourself in top two here with one jump to go. That basically decides the entire round. He has to hit this jump. That would put him into first place in the match overall standings versus Binks now. A little bit on the left side, maybe a little bit low speed, bounces too much, it's gonna be an awkward setup. Binks here though, clean, surgical execution, he will make it. Who is in second place? Is it Carl Jr. now? Carl Jr. second, Arthur third. Gloss does lock in fourth place and keeps himself in contention. But it is Carl Jr. in the lead of the match now with 107 points, off the 105, Gloss 104, Granati at 100, and Gwen at 94 is the current standings. So, so close, 13 points away for Carl, who somehow, time and time again, no matter the tournament, no matter the odds, finds himself clutching up in these moments and winning when it matters most. That's how he is, the GOAT of the game. Eighth place, though, out of the start here. Not the best pace on the ice here, but a beautiful jump and so much speed that will carry across the trade. You can see he risked very close to the roof, and that's why he's catching up so much to the others. Right now, Arthur, who's in last in the matches in first, but Granati has an excellent opportunity to get some good points as he passes Granati, as he passes Arthur on that grass part, Granati, now setting up for the last corner, getting through the spoke of the tire here is so important. Does he have the speed? Looks like a good setup. Arthur's out. Granati for 10 points, takes that in a very important round. But it's eight for Carl, it's four for Afi, five for Gloss as well. Carl, five points away now from finalist mode. Afi at 109, Gloss at 109, Granadi at 110, and we're switching map. And what are we switching map to? What is going to be potentially the decider map? It's pizza map! It is the pizza map. And Gwen has shown such incredible pace on this. Gwen has just been given a golden ticket with the pace that he has on this map. He could potentially mount a comeback. They are off to the races now. 
Glust was also really quick on this when it was played earlier on. Arthnir also really quick. Brennus made a mistake. It's all in the bug slides. That's what we're waiting for. As it looks like we are having a round restart. I think we're having a round restart here because Bren was late and we need a map presentation. This is Pizza Map. The final map that Terrader made for the tournament. He made two map packs and then this one after both the qualifiers were played. Gwen just dropped the world record on this in the semifinals. 105.2. No one else in this lobby has driven under a 107, I dare say, in the matches here. Arthur was close, but Gwen is really, really quick on this if he hits the jumps. Setting up for a bug slide here, flicking into a second bug slide in this downhill. It's good for Granati, but he has to save this ending a little bit of the bug slide. Arthur up in first, but there's Gwen as well with a lot of speed now. Getting across to the platform, Arthur's missed. And look at what I was saying, Gwen in first. Binks is only 0.15 behind and Glust is in third. Glust and Gwen right now have such a great opportunity, especially Glust, as Gwen is quite far behind the scoreboard. Does Glust hit the flip, he has to release, he has to save now. Gwen is too far gone, cannot catch him, but eight points for Glust will put him up in the temporary first place if he makes it there. Gwen jumping across the pipe, very likely to win this round. Unstoppable pace on Pizza Map. And one last flip will do it for Gwen. 10602. Glusto gets a clutch second place. Hopping up to 117 points. Granati on 116. Where is Carl? Where is Uffy? They are they are almost last. Carl getting three. Carl not getting to finalists here. And Uffy only getting a single point, it looks like. It's gonna put him at 110. It is. Carl one point ahead of Glust, one point ahead of Granati, and then Gwen, the pace monster, could deny all of them. We could have a quad finalist here because Gwen is going to drive really fast, and Carl, Glust, and Granati are all a bit likely to get finalist after this one round. Everything in the tournament hinges on these next two rounds here, and it could potentially all be over. Brad missing the start. That is really important for the top point players as it's now extremely likely that they might get to finalist. Binks into the pillar makes it even more likely but who's gonna get what? Glust into the checkpoint with a really unfortunate respawn. Is that trapped? He's trapped at the checkpoint. I don't know how the respawn works there but he's gonna be quite far behind. He only needs three points. Gwen here though with a lot of pace. Can Carl Jr. match it? Can Carl Jr. deny Gwen here somehow? Not that he has to, but he could, just for points. Gwen suddenly being a big threat to winning this match if he gets four in a row here on Pizza Map. Into the ending, Arthur is there as well. Carl only needs two points. Does not have to take big risks here, just needs to save the ending and secure this. Gwen off the pipe to the side. How much is that gonna cost him? That might cost him five spots. Arthur missing the fin. Granati in second, Gwen third, up the fourth. Does Gloss get three points? He does not. Gloss does not get the three points for finalist mode. He's stuck on that checkpoint where he crashed. But we're gonna have double finalists. Carl and Granati are finalists. Uffy at 115, Gloss 118, Gwen 112. Here we go. If either Carl or Gw uh, Granati win this round, the tournament's over. It's for $66,000 in one round of Trackmania. It is absolutely mental. The energy in the stadium is erupting right now. Everyone's on their toes watching as this could be the round that decides everything. Carl with a great bug slide, gets a good exit as well. Decent at least, but Granati gets it even better. Arthur's there, a little bit to the right. He hits the pillar. It is the two finalists up in top two. Granati versus Carl. Carl on the left side here coming through. Brett in third, point three behind. Joining Carl in the shortcut, Binks is there as well. Can Bren deny them both? Bren looking the most likely to deny everyone here. Great flip across the platform, cannot afford to clip any edges here. Carl will not. Carl did not clip a single edge, but Bren is extending a lot. Point four ahead, needs to hit the last pipe or Carl Jr. will be the Ascension champion. Only one player left to get past, but Bren, one flip remains. Bren denies Carl Jr. 
Brandon Nice and everyone else can be so relieved. Granati still has a chance. Gloss still has a chance. Gloss needs this. Gloss is finalist too. We're going to have four finalists. And Brandon's on 116 as well. Glenn is on 116. Four finalists, two players on 116. This is insane. Who is going to be the champion? Anyone can win and it's one round. It comes down to a single round. Every prediction is out the books right now. This is all about who can clutch up and drive the run of their life. A defining moment in your career if you win this tournament. The bug slide matters more than ever. Carl going so far on the inside here. It's not looking that great, but he might be able to save it and he has to go slow. Carl has to go slow. Gwen up in first. Does he hit the flip here? Looks pretty good. Tries to get low air time now for the shortcut. Arthur's right there as well. Gwen onto the shortcut transition here again. Trailing so closely is Glust, who is finalist. And Glust has an opportunity now to close out the tournament for himself. He is going against the fastest player on this map. But as one player falls, it is only Gwen remaining. If Gwen ever fails this ending here, and Binks perhaps as well, he could have had it. Now it's looking less likely. Gwen looking for his finalist mode. Binks looking for some points as well. Is Gwen going to get the last jump? To go into finalist, Gwen is finalist as well. And we have five finalists in the final. We have six. Six finalists. It's literally a coin flip. Is there one more round? Is there one more round of pizza map? We're changing maps, I think. I think we're changing maps. Six times finalists. You couldn't ask for a better script. What is the last map? Grotesque! It's Gloss' favorite map! It is Gloss' favorite map. Gloss likes this one, Arthur likes this one. Bren also likes this one. There's a shortcut on the left side that they could dare to go for. If they dare, if they dare to go to the left side and start, you can gain a tenth, and that tenth of a second could win you the tournament. We have a small breather here as the players drive one warm up. There's also a risky flip in the ending, but all more than likely it's coming down to this first round. It's going to end right here. Get some hype for your favorite players. This decides the tournament. Gwen is going for the shortcut. Arthur is going for it. Carl, they're all going for it. The extra speed is gained can be shown here. Who is going to win? Gloss got a good start. Gwen had a good start as well. Brad, another finalist with a good start. Arthur is in the mix, and he is not a finalist yet, but he's very quick on this map. Bren a little wide there, but still good. Keeps a lot of speed. Carl into the pillar almost. There's one player lost. A mistake as well from Gwen, I believe. Arthur is beating everyone, though. Is he going to postpone the match? Is he going to deny every finalist here and keep the match going? Still fighting till the bitter end, or is someone going to pass him in the cave? Bren is the closest. Gwen is right there. Carl is right there as well. Up and coming through. Arthur needs it at this point because to keep the match going one more time. Is he getting it? Arthur, he denies everyone. There's no way we go again. And to the players that failed, to Glust, for example, who crashed early on, he gets a new chance here. Shortcut once again. You cannot afford to clip any edges or it's out. Carl with a lot of speed. Got really good onto that ledge, carrying it down the hill here now through this first small cave up on the plateau. Who's gonna have the best speed through? It looks like Carl's gotten that good once more. And Bren has an even better start. Bren failing there though, landing tilted. Now finding himself side by side with Gwen, North and Carl. These three players have made a breakaway. It's three tenths down to Glust. Glust is far. It comes down to these three players, perhaps. Carl, Gwen, and Arthur. Can Arthur deny? Will Gwen run away with it? Carl is there. He's going to try to defend his throne. It's going into the cave. Arthur has a lot of speed. Inside line. Who is going to take it? Gwen, super wide. He needs a low flip. Arthur for the flip. Gwen! Gwen is going to win! Gwen is the champion! Gwen wins Ascension! The tournament's over. 
Glad wins. I think Carl got second. And I don't know who got third. But what a match. What an insane match. It is unbelievable. The biggest Trackmania tournament we've ever had on the biggest stage with the best audience. This crowd's amazing. What we just got to witness was truly something special here and everyone's standing up and congratulating the players for a spectacular, spectacular match. I don't know the final standings yet. I don't know what just happened. It's all a blur. <laughs> oh my god. And you can see the mutual respect here. What a match. Ooh. That was just in time chat. My 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 vocal cords are gone. So. <laughs> Insane. Insane moments here. We will see the final score here, I think, in a moment, but... If you enjoy this tournament, the one man you have to thank most of all is the guy on the left of the screen right now, Serrator, putting these events on for 10 years and ending with a bang here in the Ascension tournament, the last Trekmania tournament he will do for a while, he has said. Spectacular, spectacular entertainment, and there it is. A round of applause for Gwen. A massive solo win. In his career. Merci. J'ai sorti le, le, je pense, le run qui va changer ma vie, clairement. Je pense qu'on peut le dire. We need some translators. Clairement, elle fait du bien, cette, cette fin. Et en plus, But ça that was Artanir, il y a when being behind, coming to the pizza map, getting so many points, vrai, and then able to clutch up. Il y monde ici pour voir ta, ta compétition, d'autant que c'était casté en anglais, en allemand. That en run changed his life, is what he's saying. Wow. Alors, je vous remercie d'avoir été si nombreux. Une petite question pour, pour Gwen, mon cher Rayou. Gwen, c'est quoi mentalement ce qui se passe à la fin c'est flou dans ta tête, qu'est-ce qui se passe quand on joue une run à 60 000 balles euh, C'est vite. <rire> et on, a, on a des mains et on joue avec la manette et puis on voit ce que ça donne. Quoi. Vraiment, je... Là, j'en reviens pas. Pour moi, je suis en train de rêver. Hein. Je n'en reviens pas du tout. Là. Et c'est totalement réel. Il pensait qu'il ne pouvait pas faire un on-go task. S'il plaît. Wow. C'est pas totalement terminé. Il y a un truc qui nous reste à faire. Juste là-bas. Je crois que tu sais Feels ce like qui t'attend. No, I mean, and it would for any player here. It's Alors, mon cher Gwen, surreal to see yourself as the one winner of the tournament. He's going to lift the trophy. He is your champion, Gwen! <laughs> Winning the biggest Trackmania tournament of all time. Only 19 years old, started playing when he was four. And now it's all coming to fruition. Merci à tous d'avoir été présents aujourd'hui pour voir ce spectacle. Merci beaucoup. Thank you everyone, thank you to the audience, thank you guys for watching on Twitch as well. I believe this is the end of the show here. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to Raider and the French community for the opportunity. Thank you production for helping me with this, setting everything up. And helping me with the things I needed during the cast.
Comment oublier I really hope you guys enjoy it then. I think Trackmania has a bright future with events like this. Merci beaucoup au Michel de la technique, bien sûr. Merci à tous les joueurs qui ont participé. Vous pouvez encore les applaudir, ces joueurs. Thanks to the players. On va vous afficher très rapidement le classement final. Here is the standings. Carl in second, Grenadi in third, as well as the earnings from the other steps. Suivi de Carl Junior, suivi de Granadi, Bren, Glast, Avi, Bugs et Artanir. De très très belles hommes pour des très beaux joueurs. Merci beaucoup. C'était le chapitre 1 de la saison. À la prochaine. Goodbye for now, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. This is the end of the stream. Take care. Have a good night.